Angelic Raiments is a sleeper set comprised of four parts that individually seem fairly bad, but holds very useful hidden features as you gain more parts of it. The core components are the sword, angelic sickle, the angelic mantle armor, as well as the angelic wings amulet and the angelic halo ring. Individually, at least at their base values, these items are generally underwhelming, with the sword being useful up to about Act 2 normal, the armor just being a bit of defense at the cost of speed, and the jewelry being somewhat bad at first glance. Though, as any veteran of the game will tell you, these items actually comprise some of the best budget tools for ubers and hell difficulty in general for melee classes. Now, with the full set, you get a massive attack rating boost, decent defense boost, fair amount of resist, not to mention boosted attack speed, life, and a whopping 140% magic find if you wear two of the rings at least. Though, generally speaking, people don't end up using the full set, instead opting for two or three part bonuses to reach different goals. Starting with the sword, the least desired part of the set, but still pretty good for low level kicksins, we have the two part bonus that raises its damage a little bit, and a three part bonus that grants it the desired attack speed boost. Though generally the main situations where I would be using this, the full set will work fine, with the sword being the first item I start cutting later on. After that, we have the armor, with a two part bonus of an extra 150 defense, and a three part bonus of an extra 50% fire resist, giving you quite a bit of extra tankiness, and I have used this combined with the amulet and rings into Nightmare before, but you will quickly see it outclassed by some rune word choices unless you're using this as your third part for a magic find bonus we'll get to a bit later. Before we get to that though, we have the most common paired item for the two part set use, the amulet which with two parts grants us a whopping 75 life, which is a significant amount whenever you start traveling with characters that can boost life by a percent, and the three part bonus gives you a nice little plus one skills, though most of the bonuses are useful to characters that aren't going to be using that plus skills outside of maybe an early enchantress. This is almost always one of the parts you'll find people using though, especially in the late game. The last and the most desirable part of the set are the rings, well, one ring that you can wear twice to double the bonus. The main use of these is actually the two part set bonus that grants you 12 attack rating per level, which adds up extremely quickly, especially while wearing two of them. Sadly, just wearing two of the rings won't give you this bonus, you do have to pair it with another distinct part of the set, but it's still kind of nice. Now as far as the three part bonus, which is useful for low and mid level magic find, it is a 50% magic find chance per ring, which gives you a 100% bonus magic find if you wear two of them, while leaving quite a few equipment slots open. As far as how much space this set takes up, for most use cases you're using two or three slots, namely a ring or two combined with the amulet outside of normal difficulty, with the sometimes use of an extra part for the magic find in early grinding. With upgrading in 2.4, some sets will get a lot stronger or more useful with the ability to bring parts up to speed, but with Angelic's primary tools being the jewelry, you'll rarely need to consider this as part of its usefulness cost, and the scimitar and armor leave very little to desire whenever it comes to the upgraded versions, only providing mediocre damage on the weapon for the cost, which is at least percent based with the partial set, albeit a low percent, and a moderate boost in defense on the armor for the cost, since most of the armor bonus is not percent based. Overall, this set is a set you want to partially use, keeping primarily one amulet and two rings from it, only keeping the other parts if you plan some low level or mid level shenanigans with kicksins, smiters, or enchantresses, since outside of them, most of the benefits will be a hindrance compared to the other similarly costed items and similarly leveled items, especially considering what other sets could be used in those slots. In Diablo 2, there are a lot of sets, some great, some terrible, and some that would be good if only they didn't have direct competition in fewer slots. Today we're looking at a set in that last category, Arcana's Tricks, a set I want to enjoy but just comes in a little too late to hold its own weight. As an overall set, it isn't entirely useless, especially considering how many mana perks it gives you whenever you have the full set compiled, as well as its ability to give plus skills now in 2.4, even if one of them is somewhat limited to being just for the sorceress. But beyond that, outside of some faster casts, a lot of its mods simply fall into being mediocre compared to alternatives, or even sit at outright useless like the deadly strike on the death wand. This isn't helped by the partial set bonuses being good, but not good enough to justify the slots they take. Even with the two part global bonus of 50 mana or the three part bonus of 50 life and a pinch of mana regen, these are good, but you can get the same perks from plenty of lower level or less slot intensive sources. 
Now, when we get into the single parts, the staff grants us a nice plus one to sorcerer skills, like we mentioned earlier, and grabs hold of some mana perks, as many of the set parts do, with an extra 50 mana for two parts and an extra 5% mana regen for three parts. Though at the cost of a shield, it can struggle to carry its weight if you have access to other low-level sets, uniques, and rune work. On the helmet, we have a fairly basic replenish life and attacker takes damage modifier, but when combined with two parts, it does get a per level defense buff, and on three parts, when the set starts to do okay, it does grant a desirable 15% lightning resist, which, since you're usually around level 15 by the end of Act 1, early Act 2, on a normal run at least, it's pretty helpful at that point. On the armor, we see a little damage reduction, but as you start adding parts, you again see defense boost, this time 100 flat defense added at the two parts, and somewhat mediocre 10 energy added to the stacking of a third part. And while the energy does boost our mana cap, it's easily outclassed even in its own set thanks to the flat mana effects. And finally, we have the amulet. Probably the most useful of the items since it comes naturally with mana perks and a two part combination gives you 50% magic find in addition to the global partial bonus to mana, and at three parts it gives you the only other resist boost in the set with 20% fire resist. Needless to say, as we approach the upgrading portion of this look at Arcana's set, I'm going to give it just a global not worth it, not even to exceptional vote, since even at level 15 requirement it's struggling to hold its value against things like leaf, stealth, lore, and random resist or mana boosting amulets, bumping it up in level and forcing it to compete with even things like a spirit weapon shows it's sincerely not worth it. And even when doing a challenge run since it offers no percent boost, there is no significant value add by making them require more stats and levels to use. Overall, pretty much the only time I can see a reasonable use for this is levels 15 to 19, and even then it's questionable at best, even for a sorceress who obviously gets the largest benefit from it. If it was a little lower in the level requirements, or a little better in the partial bonuses, it could compete, but as it stands, there are much cheaper and easier to find tools that do what it does just better. Continuing the set series for Diablo 2, we have an early set I actually like using for normal, and that is the cold-themed arctic gear, which, while obviously geared towards the Amazon since, well, bows are a thing, it is actually a reasonably decent low-level ranged option for a number of characters if you choose to use it. This is because, as of 2.4, as a full set, it packs actually decent and scaling cold damage, a handy amount of resist, especially for cold, as well as attack rating, defense, and cannot be frozen. Not to mention a bit of a bump to life, stats, and magic find that, while not overwhelming, are good enough. Even individually, the four parts are pretty good for their level 2 requirement, though you likely won't have the stats for the gloves or the bow until several levels later, but you will get access to them well before you'd start bothering to up upgrade even from random found gear. The armor, Arctic Furs, is especially noteworthy with its 10% resist all, as well as a percentage based bump to defense that will become important later. So as far as the individual parts, despite being a level 2 requirement bow, the Arctic Horn will require some significant stats with 55 dex and 35 strength, meaning you won't be getting to use this after leveling up just once usually. But by itself, it's an okay bow with mediocre damage and a percent bump to attack rating, but as you equip it with other parts, you get access to per level bump to attack rating as well, and whenever you get to 3 parts, it adds a fairly nice 20 to 30 cold damage, which at least in normal will go a decent ways. The other stat restricted piece of gear is Arctic Mitts, the gloves of the set. It's probably the weakest link there, but it's still a decent option with natural 10% attack speed boost, a bit of life, and as you tack on additional parts of the set, you first gain 50 more attack rating at 2 parts, which is okay, and then an additional 10 dexterity for 3 parts, which will help you reach your bow a little bit earlier than normal. On the belt, we unfortunately have a limited slot count, which we'll encounter pretty much with all these normal belts, but thankfully with the addition of upgrading sets, that can can finally be corrected. By itself, the belt packs some chunky cold resist and a boost to defense, but quickly gets even more useful by granting you some magic find with two parts and even more cold resist with three parts, making it a pretty decent early belt. The last and probably the most significant part is the armor, which as we said comes with a resist all and a percent defense increase. That can go up to 325%, so it's a pretty significant amount if you ever plan to upgrade it to elite. That can kind of result in insane levels of defense for a light armor. This is further bumped by it gaining 3 defense per level with 2 parts of the set and an additional 15% cold resist when paired with 3 parts. 
As mentioned, the armor actually packs really good upgrade potential thanks to the massive percent increase in defense, and the belt also packs good upgrade potential because even just going to exceptional will allow it to have full slots for potions. Would I bother upgrading any of these to elite? Probably not except for maybe the armor since I usually find better options by then, or I can create rune words that are better by hell difficulty, but a bump to exceptional alongside some of the set bonuses can make it good for several of these items for that early leveling if you're going through the normal way. Now if you want to know more about the sets and what their uses are, there is a link on the screen to both the set guide playlist as well as a handful of other Diablo 2 videos you might find interesting or useful. Just be sure to keep gaming, have fun, and peace out. This has been Alzrath. bye. The Berserker set in Diablo 2 is in a strange place on a few levels, but overall ends up being a little underwhelming outside of some particularly strange circumstances. This is mostly due to having an ultra low level requirement of 3, and gives bonuses about on par with what you'd expect at, well, level 3, with the unfortunate side trait that most the gear requires far more strength than you'd normally have at such a low level. Now, this isn't to say that the set is worthless, as in solo cell found runs, I'll gladly use parts of the set if I'm struggling to find my core gear or have a streak of bad rune luck before finding it, but you will very quickly outclass these items with even basic rune words or crafted options with much easier to find bases. As far as hard stats, the helmet is probably my favorite part of the set, since even in itself it packs okay defense for the level, decent fire resist, and is the lowest strength requirement part of the set, meaning even by level 3 you'll usually be able to equip it or be close to it. It's also the part that gets a nice partial set bonus by gaining a small attack rating boost based on level when paired with any other part of the set. This coupled with 50 life boost makes it reasonable, but unfortunately even at level 6 you end up with a much better option even in just sets. With with the ability to wear Saigons. On the armor, we see an example of early plus skills that a few sets are noteworthy for. In this case though, it's plus barbarian skills, which are some of the least impactful of the plus skill types. Especially early on since most barbarian skills that really care about plus skills are higher level skills. Its two part bonus redeems it a little bit with a variable bump to defense for equipping two parts, though much like the helmet, it has to compete with much better options for defense just a few levels later. And lastly, we have the weapons, which naturally have a bump to attack rating and a bit of mana leech, but rather mediocre damage. Even with their potential set bonus of 50% enhanced damage, which, since this is unfortunately on weapon, is nowhere near as impactful as you would want, the set could potentially be redeemed by adjusting these partial set bonuses in the future to take advantage of the Barbarian's ability to dual wield them. But as of the recording of this, they're still very lackluster. And unlike the other sets which often have some decent redeeming qualities for full set bonuses, Berserkers flounders around with a microscopic amount of poison damage, the life we mentioned earlier, and a pinch of defense as well as poison length reduction. Which are all take it or leave it bonuses in this context since you can get much better even at low level with far better additional modifiers. For now, Berserkers, despite looking cool, sits in the category of one of those sets where I only keep it for collection's sake, never for actual proper use. And this continues to be true with any consideration for upgrades to it, since even other weapon upgrade options will offer much higher percent bonuses and value for the cost of upgrades. This on top of the defensive perks all being flat increases, so boosting the base won't do much, kind of leaves it in the dust compared to other options. So to do something a little different here at the end than we usually do, what bonuses would you give this set, be it on weapons or the armor components, to make it a bit more competitive even with other low sets? Mention it down below and we might have a video follow up just for that. Cathan's Traps is an interesting set that you likely rarely hear anything about, despite the fact that there are some actually halfway decent low level uses for the set that are often ignored. And despite having aspects of it beaten out by early rune words like Leaf, the fact that this comes in at level 11 and is generally better than the other low caster set Arcanas makes it a solid pick. Not to mention it comes with some other useful bonuses that make it competitive with other low level set options in general. Starting out, the set overall, as you can tell, easily outperforms a lot of sets thanks to its resist bumps, not to mention some nice to haves like a pinch of mana regen, a little damage reduction, and even some faster cast rate on top of a few miscellaneous mods that most users of this set won't actually care about. When we break it down into the individual parts though, we start to see even more perks, starting with the one that generally ends up getting dropped because, well, Leaf is a thing. We have Cathan's Rule, the battle staff with plus fire skills, that gains extra mana at two parts and a respectable 10% resist all to make up for it being a staff. 
Does it beat out Leaf usually? No, but it also comes in at eight levels lower and is only falling behind Leaf because of skill points, not the other modifiers. As we move up top, we have the mask, Cathan's Visage, that gives us mana and cold resist naturally, both of which are halfway decent, and at two parts it gives us a little bit of level-based defense, two per level, which, while not amazing, is generally much better than most things you'd normally be using at level 11 as a caster on your head. Sliding down, we have Cathan's Mesh, the Chainmail, that has thankfully super low requirements, making sure the set is easily equipable by level 11, even if you invested almost nothing in strength, even as a sorceress. And as you tack on more set items, you get a little damage return at two parts, and a solid bump to fire resist at three parts, actually contributing to this being one of the better resist providing sets, at least at low level. Into probably the hardest part of the set to track down, we have the amulet, Cathan's Sigil, which isn't as impressive with 10% faster hit recovery and some lightning retaliation, but it's still not terrible. And as you get more parts, you gain attack rating you likely won't use, at least at two parts, and a pinch of magic find at three parts, though a bit lower than you'd get with similar sets for the same amount of slots, so it's slightly less impressive, and you generally won't be leaning too high into the, well, amulet of this set. And finally, we have probably the part of the set that most people are tired of seeing, and that is the ring, Cathan's Seal, which, even at its base, is an okay life leech ring for normal with a pinch of damage reduction, but it can be used with partial set bonuses to help you gain access to other low-level sets much easier, thanks to each ring you wear with it granting you plus 10 strength as long as you have two parts of the set equipped, making it pretty easy to pack in an extra 20 strength early on by wearing two of them, which can help you reach weightier set or unique items than you normally would at lower levels. Obviously, due to its nature as a mostly caster set, and most of its non-caster bonuses being either non-upgradable items, or on items that upgrading wouldn't help it as much, the value of throwing runes and gems at it for making it exceptional or elite in any of the slots just generally isn't worth it. Overall, while this set does not compare to the big dogs in the low-level sets as far as longer-term usefulness, it can be a really good tool for setting up to use the, well, them in general, or even just using alongside them for a bit of a punch, or even just as a good choice if you're doing a set item-only challenge run on a caster at low level thanks to its slept-on perks. So what's your favorite low-level set out of the bunch, or do you prefer uniques for your low-level pursuits? Mention it down below, and keep gaming, have fun, and peace out. This has been Alzareth. Bye. There are a couple sets in Diablo 2 that behave somewhat uniquely, such as Trangul's turning you into a vampire, or Nat's set turning you translucent. But did you know that one of the lowly starter sets has some unique traits that, unless you use it regularly, you're unlikely to notice? That is Sivverb's Vestments an okay level 9 set that is decent enough for low level play through normal, but that functions a bit differently than other sets. Now, this difference isn't apparent whenever you're just looking at the set as a whole, because as you can tell, it just packs some undead damage boost, some resist, and a pinch of strength. Nothing too crazy, but with how few slots it takes, it can easily be paired with plenty of other options to round out the gaps you need, especially since the slots it takes are only mildly competitive at low levels. Starting with the individual parts, let's get the normal stuff out of the way first. Starting with the Cudgel, which, while it doesn't pack any partial set bonus itself, it does have a bit of attack rating and damage scaling that can keep it relevant for the most part in normal. Though, with a lack of percent scaling or anything like Deadly Strike, you generally won't see it much beyond that because it just doesn't scale as well as the other options. For the amulet, we see something again fairly standard to set items, with natural stats for replenish life and mana regen tied with a boost for cold resist at two parts and a flat defense boost with the full set, making it a little helpful for keeping you alive and kicking for a while, but not necessarily being the cornerstone of any real build you're going for. The part where it gets abnormal is on the shield, which while looking at it here, it seems fairly normal, with some defense and block on a set shield, as well as the two green bonuses from the rest of the set though how these function is distinctly unique for Sivirbs. First is something really minor, in that these are only variable green bo bonuses, and are hidden traits of the shield that can vary slightly in the amount of mana and poison resist it can provide, but it's only a minor difference that you wouldn't notice unless you had several of these next to each other. Though what's really interesting, and something that I wish more sets leaned into for flavor purposes, or even future balance passes, is item-specific partial set bonuses. That's right, Neither of these is tied to the number of items you use, but rather the base item you use it with. 
with Sivirb's Cudgel providing the poison resist and Sivirb's Icon, the amulet, providing the extra mana. And hopefully Video Me and Editing Me are showing this off right now in a way that makes sense. Now I do wish more sets did this second thing, even with the gold partial bonuses, but I do understand including it is a way of tweaking the balance and utility of various side items that could be quite a bit to do as far as coding and adjustments to item balances, along with some of my other set improvement suggestions that would be equally as complicated. So I'm not sure if we'll ever see that aspect of item design fully taken advantage of, but it is in the code and is able to be acted upon. As far as the upgrading of Sivirbs, don't bother. The cudgel can do okay in Nightmare if you upgrade it, but chances are by then you'll get a better weapon, such as a rare or unique, or even use a rune word since there are several really solid, cheap Nightmare rune words, especially among the one-handed ones. And since the shield does not get a percent boost and the amulet can't be upgraded, this will pretty much be guaranteed to stay normal item set with only minimal flexibility as you move up. Overall, I like this set as just something simple to slap enemies around with at low levels in normal. It won't win any endgame awards, but it is one that I do like keeping stashed around for pairing with a plethora of other green items in the game for fun early game transitions. So do you like Sivirbs, and do you think they should allow more sets to have specific pairing bonuses, rather than just bonuses based on the raw number of parts you have equipped? Mention it down below, and a special thanks to the channel members, patrons, and subscribers that make all of this possible. A fan favorite low level set is Kleglaw's Brace, easily one of the most mentioned when low level sets come up, and this is with good reason. It's got a lot of different utilities in the low and even mid level game, thanks to a few other nice quirks on its full set. Starting out, the set overall may only have a short list of bonuses, though since it's only a three-part set, this is fine, doubly so because among these are two very desirable traits, increased attack speed and crushing blow, which can make this a rather punchy set for a number of builds, especially for boss killing. It also has a bit of mana leech and defense, but those are generally going to be a bit less important overall. As we zero in on the individual parts though, we start to see other reasons why this set is loved, starting with the sword, Kleglaw's Tooth, with a natural bonus to attack rating as well as a fairly significant 50% deadly strike chance. It's fairly decent for just a longsword. Combine that with the level based boost to maximum damage with two parts equipped, and you actually have a fairly punchy option for a weapon in normal. Moving over to the Tongue Twister of a Shield, Kleglaw's Claw, we have a less impressive natural stats with a pinch of defense and poison length reduction, but as soon as you pair it with the second piece of the set, it makes up for it with 15% resist all, making it a reasonable choice for early on, especially since it's pretty easy to pair with the gloves by about the level 4 requirement and then just pick up the sword as you finally get the stats for that a bit later. Onto the gloves though, we have an item that simultaneously lowers my opinion of the set as fully equipped options outside of boss fighting, but also is a really great budget tool for ranged characters to pick up. This is because the pincers pack knockback and slow target naturally, which is a really good combo of abilities for budget low level Amazons or characters that already do knockback like Kixins and Chargers. These last two can really benefit from the combo with other parts of the set since at two parts Kleglaw's pincers show off their scaling attack rating boost that is easy to combine with the other attack rating boost items. In terms of upgrades, I could see upgrading the sword to exceptional to get a little extra pinch of damage if you really didn't get anything else along the way, but provided you're able to get some okay runes or even an exceptional sword like Head Striker, you can achieve a pretty similar effect without spending the resources, and obviously my opinion of upgrading the shield or gloves is don't really bother, since the improvement to defense will be exceptionally minor, you're better off saving the resources for other gear. Overall, I really do like this set, even though it does come across as confused at times, it can be a great tool for boss killing, and it's also a good tool for a few builds that don't mind knockback, and it can get some pretty good partial set bonuses if you choose your parts carefully, since each part has at least an okay bonus. Death Disguise is another fairly popular low level set that thanks to the changes in 2.4 is very well positioned as a potential tool for a number of builds thanks to an exceptionally useful and budget friendly two part combo that can now keep up with your character's progression through the game. Starting with the overall set, it's decent enough with bonus attack rating and resist to keep things rolling, not to mention a bit of minimum damage for helping with your averages at least, and a solid bit of life leech that, it is actually important to note, will show up with just two parts of the set, which is pretty important if you want to use the glove belt combo on a martial character that can definitely use that life leech. 
Moving into the individual parts, let's talk about the part that will likely get ditched first, and that's the sword, which in and of itself is not bad, though with how common it is, you will get tired of finding it. That said, it is a bit slow naturally and is not overwhelming with its base damage, but it does pack some life leech of its own, and when combined with other parts of the set, pulls off a decent amount of cold damage for normal difficulty, making it far from the worst weapon choice for your starting characters once you reach the stats to equip it. The more favorable parts are the gloves and the belt. Starting with the gloves, we have a serious poison theme. Basically, it gives you chunky poison resist and a bit of poison length reduction, which does not hurt. Though, when combined with any other part of the set, this glove whips out the big guns with 30% increased attack speed, which, if you didn't know, is the highest increased attack speed modifier you can get on a glove, and can only be found on one other item, Saigon's Gauge. What this set has that is not found on Saigons though is Cannot Be Frozen, which you get on the belt regardless of the number of parts in the set you equip. But if you do equip another part, like we usually do with gloves, it slaps on another 15% resist all, which is not half bad. Though as a sash, it's not going to give you a near enough slots to make most players happy, and that's where 2.4 comes into play. Since in 2.4, you can upgrade set items, upgrading Death's Guard to an exceptional belt for the rather cheap cost of Tal, Shale, and a Perfect Diamond. This will give you the desired maximum slots, which makes this one of the best choices for upgrading a normal set item to exceptional, though as far as the rest of the set, you won't see too much value for the exceptional upgrade, since like most other sets, you either won't get much benefit in defense for the gloves, and the 25% enhanced damage on the sword just isn't high enough to overcome the better options you can make with rune words, or even just shopping. Overall, this is an amazing set that deserves the love it gets in low-level communities and deserves more attention even in the normal player realms with 2.4 coming out. The only real hurdle for the set is that the belt and gloves can be fairly uncommon if you don't know how to farm for them due to their low item types making the areas where they are prone to drop extremely uncommon farming areas. But once you have them, whether accidentally through later farming or through targeted farming in normal, they are worth keeping at least one of for early character progression. So do you plan on upgrading any sets, and if so, which ones? Mention them down below, and as always, a special thanks to the regular viewers that help make all of this possible. Asaru's Defense is another normal difficulty set in Diablo 2 that has some rather useful traits, and is often used alongside sets like Angelic for stacking these perks. And with a level requirement of 3, you can start using it early enough that most characters can get a decent amount of mileage from them, even if it's not part of their build plan for later difficulties. Overall, at first glance, the set may seem underwhelming in the raw number of bonuses it gives, since it's a lot less than the majority of other sets, but when you zoom down and look at the individual bonuses, you can see it gives a fairly significant lightning resist for its level, and a cannot be frozen perk which will be great for progression through normal, along with some other somewhat less important but nice to have perks. Where the real bonuses start coming in are the single parts, which all have good base perks for their level, and scaling bonuses for their use of a partial set. For example, on the shield, known as Iron Fist, we have a fairly meaty plus 10 strength, which is a big deal at level 3, as well as a pinch of damage reduction with a partial set bonus for scaling defense, which can be useful early on, but admittedly does get outclassed pretty quickly on shields, resulting in the shield often being the first part of the set to get ditched especially with its atrocious block rate. On the Iron Stay belt, we have slightly more desirable traits with 20 life and 20% cold resist, which are quite a bit more important and useful for the character, though with it being a mid-sized belt, you previously only saw it used in just about normal difficulty, rarely into it like Nightmare and stuff like that. Though with upgrading, it can be scaled to a full-size belt if you need to continue using it for pairing with the boots later on. As far as its partial set bonus, it is identical to the shield with scaling defense, which on a belt can be a little bit more useful because, well, belts generally have low defense, and it especially is nice because it provides these other perks. Where the real use of the set comes in though is in the Iron Heel boots, which have okay traits on their own for their level with faster run walk and fire resist being pretty solid bonuses early on, but when combined with another part of the set, they grant you a fairly decent per level bonus to attack rating that can be very valuable for martial classes as you move up into the difficulties and will sometimes have, well, a difficulty hitting enemies. 
As far as upgrading, as mentioned, the belt is a pretty good candidate for that, though the rest of the set leaves some things to be desired. Though, if you are an assassin going with kicks, upgrading the boots can be somewhat valuable too, at least into Nightmare, since they are chain bases, meaning they will get okay damage for kicking compared to other boot types. I really would not bother upgrading any of these to Elite unless you really had to, since the rune cost for the Elite upgrade would generally net you a better item choice for the slot, even in just lazy trading. Overall though, I actually like this set, not because it provides us with desired attack rating and some resists or that it pairs really well with several other sets, but mostly because its best parts, the belt and boots, are actually super common to find while running through the game and give solid bonuses, meaning finding this super budget starter set is not going to be difficult even with more casual play. So what set would you pair with Hisaru's? Mention it down below, and as always, keep gaming, have fun, and peace out. This has been Alzrath, bye. The Infernal Tools are an interesting, confusing, yet still solid and fun set, especially whenever you consider it can give you plus two to necro skills with only a level five requirement, in addition to quite a few other pretty awesome mods, in spite of a ton of them feeling kind of confused. Though on the plus side, the 2.4 changes are at least rational for the set. Starting off with the set as a whole and why this set is good, while the equally confused Cathans is, well, less good for the caster it's designed for, it's because the slots it takes. Infernal packs its tools into the helmet, belt, and one-handed weapon slot, meaning you have a lot more flexibility with what items you pair it with, and its global bonuses are definitely nothing to scoff at. With the good bonus being plus one to necromancer skills, increased maximum mana, and cannot be frozen, though the boost to attack rating paired with chance of open wounds can help you out if you actually want to punch bosses alongside your minions or spells, though most people aren't going to do that. And you'll also never care about the poison damage or the mana leech since this wand is not a dagger. That said, on the individual parts of which there really is not a bad one, with the belt packing okay defense and a pinch of life, then bumping up your poison resist with two parts of the set and getting a bit of side eye for the half freeze duration at three parts, which doesn't matter anymore with the 2.4 changes providing that cannot be frozen at, you guessed it, three parts, which is the full set. On the Infernal Torch Wand, we get another plus one to necro skills along with minimum damage boost that kind of forces the wand up to the 13 to 14 damage you see on screen due to how minimum damage works. And when paired with a second part of the set, it provides attack rating, which could be helpful in some circumstances, but is generally not what you're going to be using for the set in general. But level five for plus one to all necro skills is still more than reason enough to use this weapon. And finally, we have the Infernal Cranium, a rather solid low level item, which naturally with nothing else comes not only with 10% resist all, but also 20% damage taken to mana, which if you're getting hit regularly, will definitely keep your mana topped off. The partial set bonus will keep the cap competitive defense-wise without upgrading thanks to providing a per level bump with two parts of the set equipped. While the only part of the set I'd bother upgrading would possibly be the Infernal Sign Belt, at least if I plan to have the strength for a battle belt, the set as a whole can be used a lot longer than most normal sets because of the bonuses it provides, generally only being beaten out as you move on to the upgrades like the White Rune Word and Lore for a Helmet to start competing with the plus skills. Though honestly, it's hard to beat the look of the Infernal Beanie on headgear even with some of the items having better stats. Overall, I tend to keep this full set kicking around, even though I rarely have the absolute need for it. It's just nice to have when making a low-level necromancer or making quick work for your mule necromancers to rush to get to their imbue quest prepped for some diadems, or even preparing your way to Act 2 to nab a cube if you don't feel like transferring one in the hard way. So do you like the Rastafarian headgear along with some solid mods, or do you tend not to play too much with the Diablo fashion? Mention it down below, and a special thanks to the channel members, patrons, and yes, even those of you who use the super thanks button, you have no idea how much it helps the channel survive. Irotha's Finery is easily one of my favorite normal difficulty sets for two reasons. One, it's just a really good set with solid resist, modifiers, stats, etc., but also because it is the only set that exists in a full overlap with other sets. Basically, you can almost never be 100% certain you got a part of Irotha's set until it's identified, since its parts share base items with Arctic, Infernal, Milabregas, and several sets with amulets. Though before we dive into those specifics, we need to hit on the set modifiers as a whole, which got a nice little addition in 2.4 with the inclusion of a 24% pierce chance, which for early range characters is not half bad considering the other modifiers we pack with this, including resist, dexterity, run walk speed, and even a bump to the four main resistance caps, meaning your limit on resist become 85% with this rather than the standard 75%. And while the set alone won't make you reach these caps, they get you close enough that even incidental gear will generally push you to 
to that point, at least in normal. On the individual pieces, we have Irotha's coil, the crown, and the overlap with Milabrega's. This nice piece of headgear comes with two very important resists, lightning and fire, both at 30%, which in and of itself makes this a really good find, and a really good tool for pretty much any character going through normal, and even a really nice choice for a number of builds in Nightmare as well. On top of that, it packs a plus defense modifier for wearing two parts of Irotha's, which keeps the defense in check as you progress forward, but tends to be less important than the helmet's full bonus. On the amulet, we have our poison resist and poison length reduction, which are nice, but not as impressive as the helmet, though when paired up with any other individual part of the set, it makes up way more than that with a 15% resist all, which is a lot better. Though like every other part of the set, this is competing with other set amulets that drop, so it makes it a bit more difficult to find that, and it has to compete in slot with several other good options, though for level 15, it definitely holds its own. On Irotha's cord, we have probably the least impressive part of the set, unfortunately but it's still not bad with plus minimum damage, a pinch of defense, and when paired with something else, it will give you a nice plus 10 to dexterity on top of the normal set bonuses, which can make it pretty good enough to consider, though it is often the first part replaced out of the set for me. If you do decide to stick with it, a cheap upgrade to exceptional will give you the slots you're missing, just be sure you have your strength up high enough for the exceptional version. And in the glove slot we have Irotha's Cuff, our cold focus gloves with 30% cold resist and half freeze duration, which makes it round out our resist fairly nice so we end up with 65% across the board if we have every part of the set equipped. This is helped by its two part bonus for increased attack speed and a respectable 20% at that, which makes it on par with most attack speed gloves outside the extreme choices. Now, while this set will not likely last you all the way into hell, the usual upgrade to the belt is a thing you can do, though with the belt being the weakest part of the set, it's kind of an internal debate as to whether you should do that, and since none of the parts scale exceptionally well with upgrading, I would usually just skip over them unless you absolutely must squeeze out every drop of defense, just realize it may not be worth the rune cost for you. As far as my overall opinion of the set, despite being a pain in the butt to find thanks to the overlap with other sets, it's still one that I like to keep in my stash for low level projects just because it's just so well rounded. And with the addition of the piercing effect, it's just more frosting on the cake and just helps it hold its own as one of my favorite low level sets in the game. So do you wish they did more to help these low level sets kind of scale into hell difficulty or do you prefer having the more tiered approach like we have now with more obvious starter sets and more obvious late game sets? Mention it down below, and a special thanks to the channel members and patrons that make this possible. Eisenhart's Armory is probably the most complained about set in Diablo 2. Not for being bad or anything, but for the fact that the armor is infamously common. To the point where screenshots of people getting multiple Eisenhart cases in a small area are commonplace, especially from act bosses. As the set goes, it's actually a fairly reasonable middle of the road starter set and pairs well with partial bonuses from other sets despite eating up four slots itself. Overall, the set bonuses are pretty generic yet nice, with life leech plus strength and dexterity, resist all, blocking, and faster run walk, the faster run walk mainly compensating for the medium shield, and then a little bit of extra. And with how easy the set overall is to find, this is fine for me, and is one of the reasons why I like this set as much as I do, despite it not being overpowered or extremely specialist. Though that said, the individual bonuses mean that you generally won't use most of the set parts by themselves and will just be sitting around for equipping the full set at level 8. For example, Eisenhart's case, the armor is just defense with a pinch of magic damage reduction, and even with two parts, it's just more defense, but this time based on level. The shield is similarly defense, but this time with a pinch of lightning damage return, though in this case the two part bonus is a bit better with a flat 8% resist all to stack on with the rest of the set, which while not as potent as Arathas, is still nice for the low level and ease of finding this. Moving over to the sword, it's an interesting little set of mods, and increased attack speed is an obvious nice perk that makes it a little better despite the base being a broadsword, while the minimum damage makes it super consistent since it pushes the damage to a flat 17 to 18 damage. While admittedly not high, this is good enough for the first half of normal on most characters with damage boosting skills. For the partial set bonus, it also provides a per level attack rating boost that will help out a little bit at the low levels you'll use it at. 
On the helmet, which is probably the best individual part of the set, we have a bit of dexterity and flat damage reduction, which for when you'd be using this is fine, and combined with partial set bonus of 8% resist all, similar to the shield, it works out fine for the first half of normal as well. Overall, while I've used this set as far as Act 5 normal, it's generally just something I'll pack around for low level characters that I want to unlock the Malice Quest in Act 1, or grab the cube in Act 2 with for storage space. That is, at least until I can find some of the sets I prefer more. And as a general set, I wouldn't bother upgrading it, especially since none of the bonuses really scale with upgrades, so you really wouldn't see near the gains to compete with other mid to late game options. So how would you improve Eisenhart's to make it more useful without making it overpowered for how common it is? Mention your ideas below, and as always, thanks to the channel patrons, members, and subscribers that make this content possible. Milabrega's Regalia is another set that got a bit of a boost with the release of 2.4 through improvement to its global set modifiers, which definitely moves my opinion of it up as a whole, but still it isn't a full set that I would seek out unless I wanted to run with that blue aesthetic as a lowish level character. This is because the set has some decent global mods, but doesn't quite hit that wow factor other less class specific sets tend to have for focusing down into a specific niche. With a plus paladin skill kind of setup, it's pretty obviously a paladin set, though the rest of its mods are generally useful for anyone with plus attack rating, dual leech, and poison resist, along with 2.4 adding lightning damage at 2 parts and cannot be frozen at 3 parts. The downside is, at level 17 when you can actually start to use this set, you'll see a lot more competition in these regards and there are a handful of ways to get cannot be frozen by this level now too. In the individual parts we can find a little bit of utility as long as you temper your expectations. For example, the shield is an okay low level magic find shield until you can reach level 29 and use something like a rhyme and its partial set bonuses are not terrible either with 50 life at two parts at least and a percent defense bump at three parts similarly the helmet may only have 15 life and mana at the base but with any other part of the set it adds a chunky 40 percent cold resist which is pretty solid and while it's not as good as something like Arathas, it is a lot more common so you're more likely to stumble on this than some of the other parts on the more lackluster end, we have Milabrega's Robe, the Ancient Armor, which seems dinky with its base stats, only providing a tiny pinch of damage reduction and damage reflection. Though, again, at two parts, it gets a fairly significant bump to defense in percent form, which would be pretty nice in terms of upgrade to exceptional if it wasn't for the somewhat gross strength requirements of the upgraded version, requiring a whopping 170 strength, though it would get you up to about the 800 to 900 defense range with two parts equipped. Lastly, we have Milabrega's Rod, the weapon, somewhat middling damage without the full set's lightning bonus, but it does come with plus paladin skills and is a percent scaling for damage, but it doesn't have any partial bonuses to speak of. So it can be okay if you want plus skills a little early, but you're usually better off with a stronger and faster weapon for melee builds or a focused plus skill scepter from merchants since the paladin is generally not a high variety skill user like the necromancer or druid. So these plus skills to all are a little less potent on him sense you usually just want one or two skills boosted. In terms of upgrading on the set, the upgrade to exceptional can be okay on the shield, armor, and weapon, but generally speaking you won't want to burn those resources for various reasons, such as the strength requirement on upgrading to an ornate plate, or that you can find better boosts in budget rune words around the time you're reaching nightmare difficulty so it kind of makes upgrading the scepter and shield a bit superfluous compared to these. Overall, the set is not bad, it just isn't amazing, so it's another normal difficulty set that tends to get bumped out by low and mid-level rune words fairly quickly after getting equipped, since it doesn't really have any specialist appeal. If only it had either some attack rating boost or the scepter got some random plus two specific skills, and by attack rating boost I mean scaling ones, not just a flat amount, I think it would be able to get bumped up over the edge, but for now, not so much. Heck, it's not even the best blue themed set in my opinion though we will get to see which one I think is later on. Anywho, do you ever use Milabregas for anything? Maybe some early plus skills or getting that low level magic find for the holy grails while unlocking stuff on your mules? Mention it down below and as always a big thanks to the players who throw a coin to the tube or over on Patreon or through the memberships here on YouTube, it helps keep uploading possible. Saigon's Complete Steel is probably one of the most well-known low-level sets in the game, for a variety of reasons, but mostly because of just how well-rounded it is as a set, especially the partial set bonuses. And it is good enough that the full set can take you through normal, and there are some partial set combinations that you can see people using all the way into hell difficulty. 
As far as the complete set bonuses, it's fairly basic. Life leech, a bit of resist, damage return, mana, fire damage, etc. Nothing extremely outstanding outside of the life leech, so you might be wondering just why this set is so well known and so respected, well, as a set. And that falls into the mods on the gear itself, most notably the partial set bonuses. Starting with Saigon's Visor, its base stats are as simple as some of the defense and mana you can see right here, but when paired with any other part of the set, we see some very familiar traits, plus attack rating per level, which is an exceptionally nice tool for melee characters especially, and it is worth noting that with a two-part combo, you also get the gold set bonus of 10% life leech, which is also a pretty handy addition for this. The other big dog for partial set bonuses are the gauntlets, Saigon's Gauge, with natural attack rating and strength which are nice enough, but they also bring in the highest increased attack speed you can get on a pair of gloves with a 30% boost, which is only tied by one other set glove in the game. The rest of the parts do still get their okay perks, with Saigon's Shelter coming in with a solid lightning resist and rather mediocre partial set bonus that does flat damage to attackers with two parts, though it's still decent enough for getting work done whenever you need that lightning resist. The belt Saigon's Wrap brings you fire resist and life, which are pretty handy as well, and when paired with a second part will give you some bonus defense, which while less important than things like attack rating and resist, is still good enough, and since it's already able to hold 16 potions, there's no need to worry about spending resources to upgrade it. The boots are also a good partial choice as well with the gloves and helm especially since it packs solid mods with faster run walk and a chunky cold resist just naturally but it also pulls in some okay partial set bonuses with 50 attack rating for two items and 50% magic find bumps at three parts which compared to a lot of other low level boots is actually pretty solid and being greaves mean that they do a fairly reliable amount of damage for a kicker as well but you need to kind of hold off on possibly upgrading them because they get heavy. The last part is Saigon's Guard, the Shield, and the only part of the set without any partial set bonuses, but it does pack plus all skills and increase block chance, so it's a decent shield for its level despite being a heavy piece of armor. Obviously, there are better skill shields later on, but at the levels you'll start using this stuff, there's not much competition, so it's still a fairly good early source of the plus skills for characters that need them for having a variety of skills. Overall, I enjoy the set, and as far as upgrade opportunities, now that 2.4 allows it, the only part that I'd really bother upgrading would probably be the boots if I was running a kicker, but I'd only take them to exceptional, and that was only if I was desperate. I wouldn't bother taking them to elite, because by then you can usually farm for something a little bit better. Though it is important to note, a solid set of rare or even several of the unique boots will serve you better than this, so if you get them, don't upgrade it to exceptional. The rest of the set doesn't have have enough percent boost to make them worth upgrading for defense, and you don't need to upgrade the belt to get more potion slots since it's already maxed out, so it's not really a high priority set to upgrade in general unless this is the only thing you have going for you. In the end, I like Saigons, but I only rarely use the full set despite how common it is, though I have run it on stream across multiple difficulties for good reason. Personally, the parts I use the most are the gloves first and foremost, then I usually pair it with the boots and either the helmet or the belt. This set is also so nice in that it leaves your jewelry and weapon slots alone, giving you some definite freedom to choose there for some very powerful combos, even letting you combine it with things like key parts of the angelic for a bunch of attack rating. And as always, a special thanks to the channel members and patrons for making this content possible, and be sure to keep gaming, have fun, and peace out. This has been Alzareth. Bye. Tancred's Battle Gear is an unfortunately overlooked set for many people in Diablo 2 that at times has risen up through the ranks for various bits of utility, especially in the magic find space. As far as its overall utility, it may be somewhat limited as a complete set due to using your weapon slot, but it is still fun to play around with even if you are just restricting yourself to partial set bonuses from it. Before we dive into the more interesting individual parts of the set, we do want to look at the global set bonuses, which in my opinion are not terrible, but could definitely go with some upgrading. It's packing dual leech, slow target, resist all, gold find, and a bit of lightning damage. It hits most of the key bases, but not at large enough values to excuse it being a five part set. But this does get helped a bit by the bonuses on the individual parts of the set. 
Starting with probably the least impressive part, we have the weapon, Tancred's Crowbill, one of the few low set weapons with percent damage improvement, which improves its upgradability, but due to it being a relatively mediocre percent, if you do upgrade it, it will only be too exceptional and not really be worth it even then. Though with the attack rating naturally on it, mana for two parts and increase in attack speed at three parts, it can work fairly well in the mid to late part of normal difficulty as a weapon. Though it is worth noting, since the attack speed bonus is on weapon, there is no global benefit to dual wielding them like you see here, it just looks cooler. Next up is the armor, with decent strength and life bumps naturally, and a flat defense per level when using at least two parts of the set, and being full plate, it does tend to look pretty nice on most characters. Though it does have the drawback of being heavy armor, which greatly slows your movement speed and increases your stamina drain. Into the more fun stuff, we have the helmet, one of the parts of the set that I'll sometimes use a bit longer than you'd think. This is because it provides off-weapon percent enhanced damage, which is basically a 10% damage aura for your character in how it's applied. Alongside this, it packs some attack rating and slides in some more resist all when paired with other parts of the set. It's actually a really good piece to keep while you're still setting up your mid to late game gear, and just due to the nice mix of modifiers it provides. Now, the most sought after part of the set is probably the amulet. It's the hardest to find, unfortunately, and on its base stats, it's kind of garbage, with just some damage reduction on both flavors. But whenever you start pairing it with other items, you'll start to see why it's enjoyed for niche use, with a 78% magic find boost for two parts, and then a little extra attack rating whenever you get to three parts. Commonly, it's the helmet, amulet, and boots for three parts, or just the amulet and boots for two parts. Moving down to those boots, they're a little bit odd to find due to their base, but they pack bonus dexterity and stamina recovery on them, which is nice enough for boots. Although by level 20, you don't need this nearly as much as earlier sets, but when paired with other parts, you get faster run walk to help at least compensate a little bit for that armor weight at two parts, and an additional plus 10 strength at three parts, meaning these are pretty good for stat smoothing, and is often why they are part of the chosen to pair with the amulet for easy magic find. As far as upgrading the set goes, the weapons are a very slim maybe to exceptional, but by then you should have the runes to at least make something passable in Nightmare that outclasses it. You definitely don't want to upgrade the armor since it will require insane amounts of strength even for a barbarian, and as far as upgrading the helmet or the boots, generally speaking the increased defense is not going to be worth the rune cost since they don't have any percent improvements. As a whole, the set is fun. I like keeping around the boots and the amulet for use on alternative magic find characters until I can find multiple magic find sets, and I do like the look of it on most characters, at least aesthetically, on Resurrected. It does get knocked down a few pegs for having a bit less flexibility for pairing as a whole set, and of course requiring a weapon slot to complete, but you can still do a few nice combos with it as a partial set bonus rather than the full set. And as always, thanks for all the support on YouTube, Patreon, and Twitch that makes all of this content possible. Vidala's Rig is another bow-based set in Diablo 2, and it is uncannily similar in theme to that of Arctic, in that it is heavily focused on cold damage and effects, but for me, Vidala's generally is preferred if I'm going to be running the full set. That said, they can actually work fairly nice together if you use one or the other as a partial set, thanks to this using the amulet and boots rather than the belt and gloves of Arctic. This set's overall bonuses are what make it better for me. While it does have some stat bumps for strength and dexterity and even attack rating, heck, it even has cold damage bump and mana legion 2.4, but what really sells me on it is the pierce and freezing that are available with all versions of the set, even legacy versions of the game. These two effects make crowd control with skills like strafe or multi-shot orders of magnitude easier, because it shuts down so many potential threats easily. Now, in terms of the single parts, let's start with the armor. While its defense will never be able to match that of a fully upgraded arctic armor, it does provide dexterity and flat defense on its base, which are good for normal, and whenever you start pairing it with other parts, it gains 24% fire resist with two parts, and then slides in some defense per level for three parts, which means for normal, and even nightmare usually, its defense will at least stay competitive with other armor options. Moving over to the amulet, we have a pinch of life boost, just flat life boost, and a nice 20% cold resist, which while not really competitive with similar levels of amulets, it's still fine, especially whenever you pair it with a second part of the set and get a hold of that 50% magic find effect. All that said though, the bow on the other hand is probably the least impressive part of the set on its own due to naturally only having plus 1 to 20 lightning damage, and no enhanced damage to speak of, or even attack speed. Its two part bonus makes up for it a little bit with a 
decent attack rating boost per level, but since you only get attack rating boosts with a mediocre weapon on this, it's doubtful you'll use the full set outside of normal difficulty since it just can't compete with other stuff like Inside Harmony or Melody that you can easily make in Nightmare. The last part, and weirdly enough the part most people seem to love the most, and the one I find way too often for my own good, are Vidala's Fetlocks, the boots. And in and of themselves, they are 30% run walk boots with a stamina boost, so you can run for days and that's pretty good. And when they're paired with another part of the set, they slip in an 8% resist all. So they're nice, at least in the context of the full set, and are okay low kicker boots, though personally I generally find other boots that I'd rather use early on unless I'm going for the full set or just happen to have them early on in a run where I'm doing solo self found. In terms of upgradability, I generally would just not do it, since for the armor and the bow, there's almost no benefit since they don't give scaling percent boosts. And for the boots, you could upgrade them for an assassin to use in Nightmare, but even then you'll usually find a better rare or magical set in Nightmare to carry you further. Overall, despite talking down about the individual parts, the set as a whole is actually really good thanks to that 50% pierce and the freeze target, which work exceptionally well for what the set was designed to do, and that's give Boazons a low level tool set, which I think meets the need really well for both mage zons and for just normal strafers and multi-shot amazons. And of course, as always, thanks to all the regular viewers, patrons, channel members, and even Twitch subs that make all of this possible. Keep gaming, have fun, and peace out. This has been Al's Wrath. Bye. Starting out in the expansion sets of Diablo 2, we have Alder's Watchtower, the Druid set, and as with most of the class-specific sets, you can probably tell that it has a special quirk about it when completed that it gives us the Valkyrie aura of unbridled shininess. Though beyond that, we actually have a fairly competent set worth taking a look at, both in the overall set bonuses as well as in the individual parts. Starting with those overall bonuses, we have fairly obvious favoring of the shape-shifting druid due to the various combat boosts, such as mana leech, attack rating, and enhanced damage. The enhanced damage being an off-weapon source, so it functions much like an aura or combat skill in terms of when it enters the formula. Now for the rest of the bonuses, they're more broad reaching with resist, mana, skill points, and magic find. So overall, it's just a pretty solid all round, albeit really only favoring one of the druid's archetypes. Though as we dive into the single parts, we start with Alder's Rhythm. Packing increased attack speed, lightning damage, dual leech, as well as some damage boost to demons, and 2-3 to three sockets, just depending on your luck. It's a fairly solid weapon in an exceptional base, though you may notice it doesn't have a percent damage boost, so upgrading it will only give a small damage boost overall. And in spite of gaining 15 strength for each of the additional parts of the set equipped, it still can't quite live up to the stronger rune word and unique options for the weapon slots on a druid, which is the main reason you only rarely see druids bothering to field this full set despite the solid global boosts. Moving over to the other socketed part of the set, Alder's Stony Gaze, we see a repeat of the partial set bonuses of plus 15 to a stat, but this time it's energy for each other part equipped. And as far as the base stats on this helmet, it comes with hit recovery, variable cold resist, some regenerate mana, and a couple of sockets for customization. Frankly, it always disappoints me to see class specific sets, or even uniques, without plus skills for their class, but it's still not a bad helmet thanks to those open slots, which will at least let you help you stay competitive with other options on the head, especially with certain jewels available. On the armor though, we do get to see some of those plus skills with a boost to elemental and shape-shifting skills, which is kind of weird since for the most part, these are not used together outside of the stuff like Armageddon. On top of that, it has some strength, dexterity, and variable lightning resist up to 50%, as well as some surprisingly reasonable strength requirements to keep up the trend of partial set bonuses. We get 15 vitality per other part of the set here, which, due to being plus vitality, doesn't go as far as you would think due to when it enters the formula, since it applies after your shape-shifting bonus to life, meaning you'll only get about 90 life from it ever, no matter whether you're shape-shifted, battle orders, or in human form. And finally, we have the part of the set that gets used the most, even by non-druids, and that's Alder's Advance, the boots. Basically, it's a Vidala's boots on steroids with faster run walk and a solid stamina boost to run forever, but also has fire resist up to 50% again. That's a theme across all of those resists. They all go up to 50%, but they can go lower. 
Stamina recovery perks are on there as well, mana recovery via damage to mana, and a plus 50 to base life. It's a flat bonus, which is applied before percent boosts, meaning it may give you 50 life in human form, but it will also scale with your shape-shifting form and battle orders, potentially giving you hundreds of life for the cost of one slot. Oh, and did I mention it continues the stat pattern, this time with 15 dexterity for each of the other parts of the set equipped. As far as upgrading, the armor is already elite, so there's no upgrade from there. As far as the druid pelt, without percent defense improvement, I'd usually just skip on it. The defense boost is just usually not going to be worth the runes. Now, the two parts that have an argument for upgrading are going to be the mace, which an upgrade will add about 20 to the minimum maximum damage, which isn't a lot, as I mentioned earlier. Though, without natural enhanced damage by percent, this isn't going to be as significant as you'd think. So yeah, like I said, it's not going to be that important. But it does have the socket, so you can mess around with this to an extent, or just be happy with the little extra damage. If you can get that extra percent in there somehow without wasting a bunch of resources, it can be okay. The big one though is the boots, with base kick damage on the battle boots being 37 to 64, but they can get ramped up to 50 to 145 for mirrored boots, which is one upgrade up and is fairly significant. Though this is only if you're going to be using these on an assassin for their standalone function. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother with it just for the defense boost, so only use it for assassins if you're going to, like, go for the kick damage. As far as sets go, you can definitely feel the difference between the classic ones and the expansion ones, since this will be more than enough to beat Nightmare, and if you're patient, even Hell. Though admittedly, you likely won't find this until after you've already beaten Hell, unless you're really uncannily lucky or trade happy. But as said, as said overall, it's definitely fun and is actually kind of interesting to use for some Fireclaw builds, or even as a partial set, or even just standalone items, in case of the boots, on other classes. So do you have a favorite expansion set? What is it and why? Mention it down below, and as always, a special thanks to the channel members, patrons, and even the super thanks users who keep the lights on so I can make more content like this. Bulkathos Children is probably going to be the shortest set item video in the entire series, mainly because it's comprised of just two parts a mythical sword, and a colossus blade. And it's also in a weird space as far as class-specific sets go, in that yes, the Barbarian is the only one that can equip the full set at once, but no parts of the set are exclusive to the Barbarian. Basically, every character could equip either of the swords if they really wanted to, but why would you want to? On that note though, the set as a whole, when you do equip it on a Barbarian, actually has okay modifiers, with Deadly Strike and Life Leash being new to 2.4, as well as the extra boost to fire damage. Beyond that, you have the old modifiers of plus skills, attack rating, and boosted damage to undead and demons. Sure, it's not a godly setup, but it falls in that range of just being a solid competent list of bonuses. That said, the swords themselves though are sort of a mixed bag that unfortunately should leave you really considering whether you want to use the set or not. The one-handed option, Tribal Guardian, has okay physical damage but really cannot compete with the rune words or several uniques you'll find around the time this shows up, and the inclusion of a minimal amount of poison damage, strength, and fire resist can't really make up for it. So it really falls into the not bad but not amazing pool when used independently of the set, and yeah, the fire resist and strength are nice, but you can do much better. Similarly, the Sacred Charge, the two-handed sword, is not really something you'll see too often on non-barbarians, mainly because, well, it's two-handed, but also its base stats just cannot compete with the more common options even with resist all and crushing blow. It sort of adds insult to injury with the knockback resulting in combat kind of being a mixed bag with it as well, since you generally won't hit hard enough to one-shot things, which is kind of what you want to do with knockback, and since it is going to knock them back, you're going to have to chase after them. Now, one nice thing about these at least is if you have them, you won't have to worry about upgrading them since they're already elite and the best they'll ever be. So pretty much if you do have them, they're going to almost strictly be only worthwhile on a barbarian. And even then, usually only a frenzy barbarian specifically. The real catch is, due to the rarity though, you'll often have a grief, death, or any number of stronger swords long before you find these. So even with the perks, I can't quite pin a good use for these by the time you'd get your hands on them. So what would you do to make the Bull Cathos set viable? Make some recommendations down below so maybe, just maybe, we can see them get a little bit more of a bump to let the two-part set actually be competitive with how rare it is, and how late it actually shows up and can be equipped even. And as always, keep gaming, have fun, and peace out. This has been Al's Wrath. Bye.
The Cow King's leathers got a little bit of a bump in 2.4, though I'm sad to report it still doesn't turn you into a cow, which is a real shame. That said, for how low level it is, it's not a terrible set, though it can be a little fiddly to find due to the parts only being able to drop in the cow level itself, and if you're intent on farming it, you'll want to focus on normal and nightmare difficulty due to the base item types. As far as the global mods, 2.4 adds a bit of defense to the full set bonus, but more importantly it adds plus one to all skills and an extra flat 100 life, which is a good chunk of life considering it's applied before the effects like Battle Orders or Oak Sage, so it can get amplified a lot. In terms of the rest of the bonuses, they're not half bad either, with a chance to cast Static Field when struck, increase attack speed, strength, as well as some magic and gold find boosts, along with a pinch of poison resist. The set as a whole can give you some nice value at low strength and level requirements with the highest part being the hat at level 25. Speaking of the hat though, or more accurately, Cow King's hornless horns, you'll notice that it doesn't have any partial set bonuses, and this will be true for every part of the set, though as far as the core mods on it, it's probably the weakest of the set, with some defense, half freeze duration, retaliatory damage, and a bit of mana recovery when hit. It's not terrible, but it's also not going to be anything to write home about. Thankfully, the other two parts of the set do have okay perks, with the hide armor giving extra flat life and resist all, which are both pretty solid mods. Beyond that, it does have some percent enhanced defense, which makes it more upgrade friendly and also the ability to cast chain lightning when struck is not terrible, so it may not be best in slot, but it is definitely something that can be worked with. The last of the individual parts are the hooves, probably my favorite individual part of the set in general. It gives run walk speed, fire damage, dexterity, and magic find, along with a pinch of flat defense. They're no Alder's boots, but they're still up there in terms of quality set boots, though unlike the armor, they are a little less upgrade friendly. Though it does beg the question, would I actually upgrade any of these? I would say no on the helmet and boots, but on the armor, if you're going to use the full set for Nightmare for something, then it wouldn't be the worst idea to upgrade it to Exceptional since it will give you good enough defense bumps for the price, though if you have other plans for your armor, I wouldn't waste the resources just to say you are a better equipped Cow King. Now as far as the boots, the reason why I wouldn't upgrade those is because, well, those aren't going to do a high amount of damage even when upgraded, you want to generally lean towards your heavier plated boots. Overall, this set may not be best in slot, but it's also not terrible, and it can work well with plenty of other set choices. It doesn't eat up any weapon slots, which is kind of nice, so you're free to use it with whatever you want alongside it in that regard, so it can be used to pull off some fun bargain bin builds on something that's easily farmable before going into hell difficulty. So do you wish Cow King's set would turn you into a cow, like Trangul's does with turning necromancers into vampires? Would you want to see some more specific farmed area items like this set? Mention it down below, and as always, thanks for all the support. You're the reason this content can be made, so keep gaming, have fun, peace out, this has been Alzarath, bye. The Disciple is one of those sets that most players know a single part of, but have never really sought out or experienced the full set bonuses of. This is because one of the parts of it is infamous for being the best in slot for a lot of builds, at least outside of certain rare, crafted, or magic alternatives that are less common to come across. And I'm wagering most of you can guess what that part is by its lovely shade of blue. That's right, it's Laying of Hands. This is often used thanks to its increased attack speed since it can easily help you reach breakpoints, as well as the 350% enhanced damage to demons perk, which speeds up your ability to kill demon class enemies, which includes, but is not limited to, every act boss in the game. In addition to that, it does also pack some really nice boosts to fire resist as well as casting Holy Bolt on striking, which may not do a lot of damage, but it does become a little more useful for this pair of gloves in 2.4. That said, the gloves are far from the only useful part of the set, since even if they're not best in slot, the rest of the items do have their fair share of utility. For example, the belt credendum is a mithril coil, so it comes with the maximum number of belt slots possible, and it comes with some nice plus stats in the form of strength and dexterity, as well as a solid 15% resist all, which is pretty competitive for resist in the belt slot. While it won't beat out more specialized uses, there are a handful of builds where I do use this over other choices due to cap out my other necessary perks elsewhere and needing to round off the resist a bit and the belt is a good slot. Getting into a bit of the more mediocre slots, we have Rite of Passage, the Demon Hide Boots, which are fairly basic with faster run walk, a variable stamina boost, and some half freeze duration on there. Sadly, like the rest of the set, they don't get partial set bonuses unless you count the global bonuses, so these tend to be completely ignored unless you plan on running the full set. Even giving minor partial bonuses could definitely offset this a bit, but as of 2.4, they're still generally a pass. In the same boat is the armor, Dark Adherent, which 
does have an okay defense boost, gotta give it that, and it can go up to plus 415 defense at its peak. Since it's already in elite armor, this means that it doesn't have to worry about the percent increases, so that's okay in this case. As far as the rest of its stats, the Novo when struck is cute, but low level, the poison damage is similarly not impactful, though it does come with a bit of fire resist to stack on top of the fire resist already provided by the gloves. This sadly is not enough to push it further though, so like the boots, unless you're using the full set, this one's also going to usually be left behind. Last and far from least, because it's sort of the middle of the pack compared to the other parts, is Telling of Beads, the rarest set amulet in the game, but only by a small margin. Yes, it is even more rare than Talrasha's, though the why behind this is a whole video topic in and of itself. As far as the stats of this rare amulet go, it's plus one all skills, 18% cold resist, and a little bit of retaliatory damage. It also has a fairly varied amount of poison resist, ranging from 35 to 50%. So basically, it's an okay level 30 requirement dual resist plus skills amulet, which puts it somewhere between Eye of Etlick and a mediocre rare amulet for your class. So not bad or godly, it's just good for its level, but unfortunately it is harder to find than something better. Now, as far as the full set bonuses, it's another situation of not bad, but not godly. Basically, it comes in with plus two to all skills, some strength and mana, as well as 50% resist all. Not to mention a buggy display of poison damage that has surprisingly not been fixed for almost 20 years. It's actually still a tiny amount, just as long as you have your other poison sources, it just won't display properly, as you can see here. There are a couple of nice things about this set though, as a whole at least. The most obvious one being that it leaves some key slots open, like your weapons, helmet, and rings, which is a good thing that works in the set's advantage, though it does still eat up the amulet and the armor slots, meaning it will preclude a good caster or safety amulet, and it might even prevent you from using your endgame armor choice like Enigma. The other nice thing is actually the way its plus skills work, since they are plus all skills, they will actually impact O skill items, such as call to arms, unlike the class specific plus skills like those on crafted and rare amulets we mentioned earlier. So it can be a good stopgap for pre buffing while you're working your way up to Enigma, that is, if you're lucky enough to find all the elite parts of this almost entirely elite item set. I say almost, since the boots are the only part that is not elite or jewelry. As far as upgrading those boots, just don't do it. Trust me, you won't have a happy time with it, since it will add so little utility and they are almost never used outside of the set itself. So do you think the Disciple is a good mid-tier set, or does it just not pass the cut? And what would you do to make it worth finding all the elite tier set items, or the rarest set amulet in the game? Mention it down below, and as always, a special thanks to all the channel members, patrons, and supporters that make this content possible. Griswold's Legacy is the Paladin exclusive set in Diablo 2, and it sits in a place most other class specific sets do not, in that to use it optimally you either want to use the whole set or none of it. Sure, if you're going solo self found, this changes a bit, but chances of you finding any part of the set other than the armor, much less in a solo run, is pretty slim due to the rest of the parts being fairly high level elite items. In terms of why this is, it's because the set is based around sockets with moderate stats on the items themselves. For example, Griswold's Honor, the shield, and probably the weakest part of the set, is a 3 socket paladin shield with block boost, defense, and resist all 45%. Which sounds pretty solid at first until you realize that plain white paladin shields can get that amount of resist boost and up to 4 sockets for rune words on top of it, so it starts to feel a lot more vanilla. And beyond that, we even have the ultra rare jeweler's paladin shields that can get up to 4 sockets with similar similar mods as well. Thankfully, the other parts of the set do have things that set them apart from their bases, such as Griswold's Valor, the helmet, that provides a bit more resist, cold absorb, magic find, and two sockets, along with a bit of a defense boost as well as thankfully reduced strength requirements because Coronas are pretty hefty in the strength department. The helmet also thankfully has a partial set bonus that boosts your offensive auras, which combined with the full set bonuses is not a bad boost to your paladin's effectiveness and can even save you some points and investments in your build if you use things that have hard caps like Conviction. Down to Griswold's Heart, the armor, we have a few nice to haves, though this time without any partial set bonuses. The extra defense aura buff isn't quite as good as offensive auras or combat skills, but still better than a stick in the eye, and as far as the defense, it's brought up to a bit under a thousand with the perks when you leave it exceptional, and we also get both the strength boost as well as a requirement reduction on the armor to kind of keep things in check and letting us invest a little less to reach our shield. With three sockets, this can't quite beat out a jeweler's armor by itself, but it's still a fairly decent and a bit easier to find option for that kind of effect. And as far as the strength on upgrading it, just don't. It gets really nasty. 
Now on the weapon, Griswold's Redemption, it's a toss up as to whether this or the shield is the biggest pain in the butt to find, but this one is somewhat decent even if in and of itself it's a bit of a middle of the road weapon due to somewhat in an unimpressive damage compared to rune words and stuff like that in the same slot, it even kind of falls behind some uniques. It does however pack decent speed with the attack speed boost and it does get an okay potential partial set bonus to help with its damage, as well as a boost to combat skills, with the combat skills coming in at two parts and the damage boost coming in at three and four parts respectively. Redemption, like the rest of the set, can spawn with sockets, though it is variable between three and four sockets, which in the niche builds that generally use this set, it's a pretty important distinction to get that four sockets, since these sockets are pretty important for placing specific jewels related to the individual builds. In terms of the overall set bonuses, when you combine it with the plus skills, resists, and the 11 to 12 sockets possible on the individual parts of the set, it's actually semi-decent with a few more plus skills, some extra strength and dexterity thrown in there, as well as a pretty hefty 150 flat life, which is, as we've mentioned in other videos, added before battle orders or oak stage take effect, so it can be amplified a ton, and it's actually a decent amount of life. We also do have that 50% resist all tacked on for a bit more tankiness, which is pretty good as far as full sets. Go. In short, as an overall set, Griswold's comes in at an odd place where it's fairly strong for a few builds, but never really best in slot. Think of it as always winning third or fourth place in every competition you're part of. This is mostly because its parts are good, but not godly, and only really brought up to snuff by what you put into the massive number of sockets available to you with the set, which means you not only need to collect the set, but also multiple instances of what you want to put in it, such as rainbow facets or damage jewels, which can get pretty expensive and time consuming for, at best, a second place pick. So what do you think of Griswold's legacy? Does it need some boosts, or can it be taken from runner-up to contender just by introducing some new jewels to the game for interesting perks? Mention it down below, and as always, keep gaming, have fun, and peace out. This has been Alzrath. Bye. Heaven's Brethren is a set that is pretty much always forgotten about, so much so that they even forgot to include its changes in the 2.4 patch notes, despite it actually even having its partial set bonuses changed, with one being removed. This on top of it actually getting some noteworthy mods added, so the fun fact is, you'll notice it has yet to be updated on any of the normal websites for Diablo 2 information. Now is it enough to make this set desirable, in spite of its level 81 requirement to complete? That depends on your perspective, but considering the slots it takes up, I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe not, but the changes definitely make it a little more appealing than it used to be. Starting out, let's get in on those global modifiers since that's where all the changes happened. It still maintains the plus skills, resists, and cannot be frozen from its original setup, but it slips in a little extra replenish life, life leech, fire damage, and even 24% damage reduction, with the life leech being available at two parts equipped and the fire damage and replenish life showing up at three parts. Considering the slots it takes up for these bonuses and the associated level requirements, this is a move in the right direction, but it could use a little more of a push. Moving into the individual parts, let's get to where that level 81 requirement comes in, and that's Tabex Glory. Holding both a high level requirement and a pretty nasty strength requirement as well to equip, it's not too great in that regard. And as far as its base mods, it's indestructible, which is fine but not super important on a shield, but it also has a decent chunk of mana and lightning resist as well as a boost to blocking that definitely does come in handy if you're going for a max block build. It also packs a little bit of retaliatory damage, but not enough to become super important later on. Moving up, we have a another elite item in this set, albeit one with a thankfully lower strength and level requirement, and that's Ondal's Almighty, the unique spired helm that looks like a rather impressive crown. It comes in pretty nicely with plus strength and dexterity, as well as hit recovery speed and a chance to cast weaken on striking, which can be handy for some circumstances, despite not being as general use as curses like Decrepify. I would say this could be a good budget helm, but there's a better budget helm that's lower level requirement and far easier to find that kind of beats it out for any build that would need this helmet. The third elite part of the set, yeah, this is three elites and one exceptional, just like Griswold's, is Dangoon's Teaching, the Reinforced Mace. A little bit steep on the requirements for what it is, but it is your standard scaling max damage weapon with good attack speed boosts, and that's just like your general set weapon go-to for a lot of sets for some reason. Though it does pack a bit of fire damage and frost nova on striking, that can be somewhat nice, but it's just not punchy enough to compete with much easier to find and wield weapon choices. Though, if you're going to use the 
the shield, you'll have more than enough stats to wield this lollipop of a club. Lastly, we have the armor, the only non-elite part of the set, Heimosu's Adamant, which is pretty much just a light armor with lowered strength requirements, some plus defense bumps, which are good enough but still flat values, and an okay bump to life at 75 flat life, so it does benefit from stuff like battle orders. As far as whether you should upgrade this armor, that's a bit more debatable, since personally it's not worth the rune cost, though it could push you a bit on defense, kind of closer to a thousand, and you would still have the strength to fully equip the set, even with the upgrade, since the Great Hauberks are relatively light. Overall, my opinion of this set is still that it does not quite carry its weight, especially whenever the three major classes that would use it, the Druid, the Paladin, and the Barbarian, all have way better options by the time you can equip this. And while those items are more sought after, they're also more commonly kept for the same reason, while most people ditch Heaven's Brethren without even checking it, which, oddly enough, is why there's only a couple mentions of these changes online and none of them on the major item websites. So what else should they do to Heaven's Brethren to make it more useful, or do you have a build idea that you'd like to try with the changes? Mention it down below, and a special thanks to all the regular viewers, active patrons, channel members, and even Twitch subs that help keep the channel afloat. Juanan's Majesty is an interesting case of a mid-level set that actually has some utility unlike the similarly statted elite sets. This is mainly due to the fact that you can start equipping it in early Nightmare when there's only a handful of potential competitive options, though you will want to eventually upgrade off of each part of this set at some point. The main people who will look at this set will generally be druids and barbarians, at least until they reach a solid weapon upgrade, which will negate most of the utility of the set due to most of the best bonuses for it being tied to completion. As an overall set, you'll notice its bonuses are in line with sets like Heaven's Brethren and The Disciple, with plus skills and resists, with a bit of flavor thrown in based on the set itself. In this case, since it's a weapon set, we have Life, Leech, Faster Run, Walk, and Defense, all in reasonable quantities, though due to the weight of the armor, you'll find a good chunk of that run walk is negated by the speed penalties, and unfortunately the only bonuses you get for equipping partials of the set are flat defense increases, so it's usually all or nothing unless you want some of the bonuses from the individual base items. Speaking of that though, on the individual parts we do have some okay bonuses, with some of them being relatively uncommon, especially for their slot. For example, on the armor we have a chance to cast Static Field when struck, which can be pretty nice, though generally you won't want that activating too much, since it's not pleasant being hit in the face, but it can help if you're already being hit. Anyway, the rest of its bonuses are not terrible either, with some poison resist, pretty significant plus life, and some flat defense boosts. Not a bad amount, but also not an obscene amount. The only big drawback of this part is that it does drag down your run walk speed, as we said earlier, pretty significantly. Moving down first, we have our only normal tier item, the belt, which you will want to upgrade if you plan to use the set, since it's missing a row of belt slots until you do. As far as its mods, it's okay, with lightning damage, prevent monster heal, and a bit of mana recovery in the form of damage to mana. It also has a level based defense bump, which is okay as well. Sure, it's nothing crazy, but it can be fun to run if you find it doing a solo cell found run, for example. Though as an aside, not every set belt of this type is going to be Wannan's, since it shares a drop slot with Asaru's. Pretty much in Nightmare and Hell though, you'll have a 50-50 chance of it being one belt or the other, since they're equally weighted. It's just that Wannan needs a level 28 enemy to drop it while Hisaru's doesn't. Back to the exceptional items, we have Wannan Splendor with Cold Resist, pretty chunky Replenish Life, some magic damage reduction, and a decent percent defense boost. Though I wouldn't upgrade this due to the sheer strength requirement of Coronas, which is what it would upgrade to. This helmet would be more interesting to me if it came in at a lower level, since it would pair greatly with Malice, but by the time you're 45, you should be using something better than that, so this usually just collects dust for me unless I'm really unlucky or using the full set for something. And lastly, just like the end of many things, we get the bill, or more precisely, Huanan's Justice. It's indestructible, which is nice to have on a weapon, especially on faster attackers, as well as some okay other mods, such as increased attack speed to make you that faster attacker. It does have some percent enhanced damage, and even attack rating, not to mention a pinch of lightning damage. But what really saves it for me is, oddly enough, the chance to cast level 3 Ice Blast. This is because while the weapon's overall damage is, well, mediocre, this little bit of an Ice Blast can go a decent ways to controlling crowds, and even managing revival enemies because once they're frozen, they're easy to shatter. Would I rather have an obedience or even an insight? 
Probably, but this is common, indestructible, and has a decent attack speed naturally built into it, so I don't need to use external bumps to get up to the desirable speed in case I don't have any of the increased attack speed gloves or other pieces of equipment. As far as upgrading, I probably would not waste the runes on upgrading any part of the set, except maybe the belt if I was going to use it, just for those extra potion slots. The gain on the rest of the set is just generally not going to be worth it, especially whenever you take into account the raw strength requirements on the percent boost items like the weapon and helmet. Heck, even the armor becomes a little bit unwieldy if you do try to upgrade it. As I said overall, I actually like Wannans as a mid-tier shapeshift druid setup, even though there are better piecemealed options for Nightmare difficulty. This is because they're all relatively common to come across, and if you're into trading, dirt cheap to get, even early on in something like a ladder season. So you probably have no use for it if all you do is tag along for rushes, but playing through, I'm not opposed to using it from time to time. And as always, a thanks for all the support for all the channel members, patrons, and even Twitch subs you see on screen now for making this channel Channel possible. Of the two Barbarian sets, Immortal Kings by far outweighs Bulkathos in terms of usefulness, both for the Barbarian as well as for other characters. This is because it combines solid enough bases with a good partial set mod and the fairly standard style of class-specific global set boosts. Add to this the fact that most of the key parts outside of the helmet and armor are relatively common to find, compared to other class sets at least, and you have a recipe for something fairly nice. Now, the global bonuses are not too special. They are your standard class-specific set bonuses with plus skills and resist being the cornerstone, and then a handful of miscellaneous mods that apply to the class. In this case, attack rating, a chunky amount of life, and a little bit of magic damage reduction to just round it out a little bit. Where the set shines, though, outside of the obvious glow, is the individual parts and partial set bonuses they have, which, if you've noticed, we've been hovering on the least impressive of, Immortal King's Will. The only part without partial set bonuses, but it's still not a terrible part of the set since it not only triggers the partial bonuses for the other parts, but also comes with plus to war cries, two sockets, and some magic and gold find, making it a fairly reasonable tool for augmenting a few builds from horkers who just need the magic find to berserkers who might want to use those sockets for something a little bit more punchy. Getting a little more utility, we have the other fairly rare part of the set, Immortal King's Soul Cage, the Sacred Armor. It has some interesting base mods with plus combat skills which are nice to have but not necessary to seek out due to how they work, as well as plus defense, poison resist, and a chance to cast enchant when struck, which can really help your attack rating. As you start packing on more parts of the set though, you start getting the partial set bonuses, starting with 25% faster hit recovery at 2 parts, then moving on to cold resist at 3, fire resist at 4, and lightning resist at 5, with the enhanced defense coming in whenever you complete the set. Over on the Stone Crusher, we have a similar path of partials, but more offensive, with fire damage at 2, lightning damage at 3, cold at 4, poison at 5, and finally magic damage whenever you complete the set. This all stacks up quite nicely as a tool for dealing with physical immunes, and for the non-physical immunes, the hammer itself does some pretty solid work, with decent damage, especially to demons and undead, natural increased attack speed, variable crushing blow, and two open sockets on top of that. Oh, and it's also indestructible, which means no worries about repair costs. It's one of those weapons that gets overlooked a lot because it's a set item, but really is one of the better two-handed weapons in the game, especially if you're on a budget. To continue the parts that characters other than the Barbarian should keep an eye on, we have Immortal King's Forge, the War Gauntlets. Their natural stats are okay, with strength and dexterity for help reaching those more extreme requirements for parts of the set, as well as some of the token defense and charge bolt whenever struck that are just kind of there, though this set, like many set gloves, start looking better with partial bonuses. With 25% increased attack speed at two parts, which is higher than most gloves can get in the game, with the exception of Deaths and Saigons, and as we move on to three parts you get some token defense, but after that we get some life leech at at 4 parts and mana leech at 5, with the freeze target slipping in upon completing the set so only barbarians can get that part. Over on the belt, we have a similar stat boost, though this time just in the form of strength, but we also pack in some lightning and fire resist which are pretty handy to have as their desirable resistances. As we move into the partial set bonuses, we get a mixed bag of improvements though, with defense at 2 parts, hit recovery at 3, percent boost defense at 4, and then damage reduction which is a really good one by percent, coming in at 5 so any class can use it, then there's a boost to barbarian masteries at set completion which like combat skills is nice to have, but not as drastic as plus skills for other classes. 
And finally, we have the pillars, or more precisely, the boots of the set, which at the base points play second fiddle to Alder's boots, but are still decent enough with faster run walk, attack rating, and life boost. So they definitely have a place just as good all-round boots, even outside the set. And as you start getting on the partial bonuses, they sadly don't grow too much, though, with a pinch of magic find at two parts, which is okay, plus combat skills at three, like we've said, is just kind of nice to have but not necessary, defense at 4, and half freeze duration at 5. None of these are really that great of bonuses, but they're better than nothing and generally these are just used as good boots to round out the partial set bonuses. Overall, the Immortal King is one of the better sets in the game and is more than capable of completing endgame content, both as a full set or just as a partial set on non-barbarians. This, Talrashes, and Trangles are generally the measuring stick I use as to whether a set is good or mediocre at endgame, since they're strong enough to do what you want without contributing to power creep. And as always, a special thanks to the channel supporters for making this content possible, and if you'd like to help support the creation of new content and have your name here on screen, you can find links to the Patreon in the description or use the join button down below to join through YouTube itself. Mavina's Battle Hymn is the Amazon-specific set designed around the Ice Maiden build variant of the Mage Zon, with armor as glowy as possible, of course. While it is a bit harder to find this full set than some of the other Elite class-specific sets, due to its part selections, it can still be traded for rather easily and is a budget-friendly option for Mage Zons in general, in spite of being a bit stronger for Ice than Fire. As far as overall bonuses go, the full set gives you a fairly similar group of gold bonuses compared to other class-specific sets, with plus skills, resist, some strength and dexterity, as well as attack rating and magic find. Though a special note on the gold set bonuses for this one is this set is pretty good for partially equipping due to the fact that the global bonus to strength pops in at two parts and the dexterity bonus pops in at three parts. So you can get some benefits from running parts of it early, especially since there's stats on the gloves as well. Which, as you can tell here, give you an additional plus 10 strength and 15 dexterity on top of some less impressive stats in the form of a bit of cold damage, albeit with a slightly longer than normal chill duration, as well as a reduced freeze duration for you specifically, and extra gold on top of that. And while it is unfortunate that it does not get increased attack speed, it does have some nice partial set bonuses in the form of more base cold damage at 4 parts and the percent boost to cold damage whenever the set is completed. The other part you'll see equipped relatively early and sometimes as a sneaky addition to certain late game setups is the belt, with faster run walk in this slot being its claim to fame. But it also does pack some mana leech which can be pretty handy, as far as the partial set bonuses though, it sadly only gets one, and that's at four parts with 25% resist all, which, when stacked with the full set bonuses, is not that bad, but it's not super impressive either. Moving up to the higher level gear, we have Ma'avina's Embrace, the armor, which is unfortunately medium armor, so it sadly negates a good chunk of the belt's speed boost, but this does provide some passive and magic skill points that can help make your Valkyrie a bit tankier, and your arrows more likely to pierce if you have the skills into the base. And it also does have two types of boosted defense, some magic damage reduction, and a chance to cast Glacial Spike on enemies that have the audacity to hit you. As far as the partial bonuses, it gets some faster rate recovery at three parts, but overall, as you can tell, the armor does leave some things to be desired compared to other class-specific sets if you're not leaning into the full set itself. A part, however, that is desired by multiple classes and is one of the veteran secrets of the game is Ma'avina's true sight, the Diadem, which, while it does have some replenished life and mana, it is obviously most well-known for packing 30% increased attack speed, and is usually a placeholder until people can get specific artisan helmets, which give you three sockets which let you get up to the same attack speed. Though this helmet is helped a bit by its partial set bonuses as well, with plus all skills at two parts, a buff to attack rating at three, and then some more resists at four parts which kind of match the belt, although yeah, it's four parts, so it's not too impressive even though it's 25%. It is easily, though, one of my favorite parts of the set, and as you can tell by the socket in it, that is sadly not normally there. I got that from Larzik. I have used this specific one on more than one occasion. And last but not least, the part that makes this Amazon-specific set is the Grand Matron Bow, Ma'avina's Caster. An interesting bow in its own right, thanks to increased attack speed, magic arrows, as well as okay damage for a bow, even though it won't compete with something like Faith or Wind Force. But thankfully, it does do enough damage that you'll get a decent amount of leech from it if you have mana leech gear on like the belt to kind of keep you up and going. As far as the partial set bonuses, at two parts you get the magic damage which is fairly nice, at three you get cast nova on striking which centers around the enemy being struck which is kind of nice as well because it's a nice little AoE, and finally you get the bow and crossbow skills at four parts which will greatly help you cast freezing arrows later on and do decent damage with them. 
Overall, Avenas is an interesting set that has several uses across multiple characters, though for its intended purpose, it essentially sits as the core B-tier Mage Zon setup that can work for the build through the end of Hell, but it just can't quite compete with the Runewords and Uniques in the post-game. And as always, a special thanks to the patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers that make this content possible. Natalia's Odium is an interesting set, and is one of the few sets that does not have a belt that I actually would consider upgrading part of, and this is because it is the Assassin set, and it works fairly well for several of the kick flavors to get those upgrades. On top of that, while it's again a situation of being not quite best in slot for the class specific set, it is still more than competent at completing Hell difficulty. Starting with the global bonuses, we have perks that are a bit better than most other class specific sets with plus skills and resists as usual, but topped off with a little magic damage reduction, dual leech, and most importantly, 30% damage reduction, which puts you more than halfway to the physical damage reduction cap of 50%, meaning this is going to be a really solid tool for boosting your survivability, especially when the actual fade skill is taken into account. As far as the unique appearance of the set, making you translucent, that's just a graphical change that has no effect, though it is the reason we look like we're bald with metal plates on our heads since that's how translucency works on 3D models. Into the individual parts of the set, there's a little bit of bad news in that there's not any partial set bonuses on the various parts of the set, but they at least have okay core stats, with the claws having damage boosts of the various types, but more importantly ignore target defense, increased attack speed, and some fire and cold damage to round it out, which are handy to have on a number of the assassin builds, though you are missing out on skill claws by using these. Though as a note, they do not come with the sockets in them, those are Larzic specials, but they can be pretty nice. The part that does not need Larzic for the sockets is the armor, Natalia's Shadow, an unfortunate base armor type due to slowing down your run walk speed, but it does come with plus shadow disciplines which can be okay, as well as some poison resist and poison length reduction, and it is worth noting that while the armor does have plus life, it's variable life per level, so it is not affected by percent boost to life. That said, the armor does have a nice perk of spawning with anywhere from 1 to 3 sockets, which can make it a lot more flexible. Moving up to the helmet, we have Natalia's Totem, one of those set items with annoyingly variable stats, with variable defense, strength, dexterity, and resist all. This one is actually an example of a low roll one, since strength can go up to 20, dexterity can go up to 30, and resistances go all the way up to 20 as well. And if you care about the defense boost, it can get up to 175, though it doesn't matter that much. The last stat is a little bit of magic damage reduction, which will always be that low, because it's not variable. The last part we have, and the part I would look at potentially upgrading if I was running a kicker, this is because it takes the boots damage from 23 to 52 damage all the way up to 69 to 118. Nice. So yeah, more than double the base damage. As far as the bonuses on the boots themselves, it's mostly faster run walk to counteract the armor weight on the torso, but also some variable lightning and cold resist that both can range from 15 to 25 percent, which is pretty nice as well. As far as the stamina replenishment and defense, I usually don't worry too much about those, but they're better than nothing. Simply put, they don't match the Immortal King or Alders set, but they are functional and work well enough to not be a burden when using the full set, and when upgraded they do reasonable kick damage. Now there are better uniques than this, but it still works out quite well. And also, for some weird reason, the Resurrected interface does not show the damage on set boots, so you kind of have to go look those up. Overall, I actually like Natalia's set. It's not overpowered, but it is functional and useful, and can be worked into several builds, whether you're Dual Claw or Claw and Shield. It can be an interesting tool, though with the changes to Phoenix, I generally will prefer that second option. So what set would you combine with Natalia's, or would you just pair it with some uniques? Mention it down below, and as always, a special thanks to the channel members and patrons that you see on screen now for helping keep the lights on. Nash's Ancient Vestige actually got a fairly decent bump up with the release of 2.4 in Resurrected, with quite a few new additions to the full set bonuses, and while this is often listed as being a sorceress set online, the reality is these bonuses are pretty handy for several build types across a variety of classes, with Druid being especially in tune with these changes now that both his summons and fire skills have been greatly improved. This is because the set has added a decent number of global boosts in 2.4, so in addition to the classic set bonuses of plus all skills, strength, dexterity, and mana, as well as global resistances, they decided to give it an additional boost to fire skills, maximum life by percent, and even a scaling magic find value, all of which stack up very nicely with the individual set item bonuses. This creates a solid budget option not only for the sorceress, but also builds like the Fishymancer and the Fire Summoner Druid, whose skills are especially well tuned to the bonuses in this set. 
The biggest reason for that is going to be the most well-known part of the set, Nash's Puzzler. Mostly thought of as an easy teleport staff, albeit at a fairly high level requirement, it does pack on a number of other nice bonuses, such as plus skills, faster cast rate, plus energy, mana, on top of that, and not to mention an awkwardly high damage for a caster weapon. Why it's set so high, I'll never understand, but until you get an Enigma, this can actually be a pretty decent item for improving the speed of your farming and movement through non sorcerous characters. The less acknowledged parts of the set are first the horribly common Nash's circlet that seems to drop everywhere for me, and I generally never use unless I'm going to be using this set for a run. This is basically because the only really useful mod on it is the plus strength. The rest of the effects like the tiny amount of fire damage and low level chain lightning when struck don't really impress me that much, even at the lower level requirement of 28, since so many better items open up at that level or soon after. The other part is Nash's Light Plate, which is ironically heavy armor as far as run walk goes, but with the minus requirements, the stats needed are at least reasonable. Now, in terms of more functional mods, the armor is actually fairly decent despite being often ignored, being about on par with armors like Skulder's Ire. This is because it's skill armor with resistance boost plus flat life, which works well with the new plus percent life boost on the full set, and it also does offer some mana replenishment in the form of damage taken goes to mana. So overall, as a full set, it has been greatly improved, with a lot of perks that bring it at least up to speed with more budget gear options. And thanks to plus fire skills working on all classes, with skills ranging from fire traps on assassins, corpse explosion on necromancers, and half the druid elemental tree, there is a fairly nice diversity of non sorcerers builds that can benefit from a set that also gives them teleport, until they can get a hold of something like an enigma. So are there any buffs that you would still give this set? Would you change the staff to having plus one to teleport rather than charges, in spite of the understandable aversion to base item changes. Mention them down below, and as always, a special thanks to the channel members, patrons, and supporters that help keep this channel going. Orphan's Call is a rather interesting set, with most players being at least somewhat familiar with the individual parts and their uses, but very few bothering to assemble the full arsenal all at once. This is unfortunate since, taken individually, every single part of the set has value, just for different characters, builds, or even just situations, usually. This is partially because the full set bonuses are a bit lackluster, but also because the set has a distinct lack of partial set bonuses on the individual items as well. Just looking at the full bonuses, we have a low amount of resist all, a bit of strength and dexterity, and an okay amount of magic find and flat life. But nothing special compared to the other options, so items really do need to stand on their own, since if you're going to use a full set, you're going to need to favor the ones that basically give you the better bonuses in these slots. Now some of the parts, like Yom's face, are more than capable of fulfilling that need, thanks to some unique or high-powered bonuses. In the case of the helmet, this is thanks to the solid strength boost, deadly strike, and crushing blow. It's basically acting like a pair of gore riders on your face. It also packs okay defense and faster hit recovery for those that need it, making it an all-around useful addition to an arsenal. After that, we have the budget blocker shield, Winston's Guard, which due to some mechanical changes in the game, used to be a lot more useful than it is now, but it's still not half bad. Basically, the shield just has an amazing boost to block chance, making it relatively easy for any class to hit max block rate, and it combines it with faster block speed so you wouldn't end up block locked. The rest of it is just odds and ends, such as half freeze duration, light radius, and defense boost. It's just not as useful as it used to be, and even when it was just the budget blocker, it was just kind of an okay shield. The belt, Wilhelm's Pride, however, is a budget item that still has its budget uses, basically bringing you max belt slots, dual leech, and a pinch of cold resist. It's generally not going to be your end game belt unless you need both leeches and can't get it elsewhere. But while grinding up stuff, it can be super handy to keep around, however with competition from Mavinas, if you just need mana leech, or string of ears if you only need life leech, it has always kind of struggled to find its place in most specialist builds, only filling the gap on those builds that absolutely need both leeches and can't get them elsewhere. Similarly, the Magnus skin gloves are limited to very specific cases where they would be ideal, although these are at least in more common spots like, you know, cow farming. This is because Laying of Hands is hands down better in most areas of the game with mixed enemy types, including act bosses, thanks to its boosted damage to demons, whereas Magnus Skin, while focused on the same increased attack speed, only gets a decent flat attack rating boost in terms of offense. It is also unfortunate that they also pack lower fire resist than their main competitor, since it feels like that could have been another place to differentiate them, but it was not taken advantage of. And lastly, we have Wurt's Leg. It's not actually part of the set, I just felt it appropriate to 
grabs and sees an orphan too, and it's super common to find and gives us a little extra damage against undead in case this little pilferer next to us comes back like Griswold. Now, as far as set upgrades on this one, I would usually say no, though there is an argument for most of this set since they give percent boosts at, for the most part, reasonable levels, so if you're already going to have the strength, the extra defense would not be bad, just maybe not worth the co and lem cost for each piece. In terms of using the set overall, generally I would stick with picking the parts that fit best with your needs and just use them standalone. The set as a whole is not terrible, and you can find it relatively early on for what it does, with all the items being exceptional items with relatively reasonable Q levels, it's just most of it, with the exception of the helmet, will generally be upgraded out of by the time you're in the end game. So do you think Orphan's Call should get some improvements, maybe gain some perks when upgraded to allow it to continue to compete, or should it stay relatively dead in the water in the postgame like Word here? Mention it down below, and as always, a special thanks to the channel members, patrons, and supporters that help me spend a little more time on content for the channel. Oh, and if you didn't know, the peg leg actually does disappear from Word's body whenever you grab it. Sanders Folly, a set that fails so hard it even fails at failing, since it doesn't fail hard enough to be the worst or heck even the second worst set in the game, but due to how it's set up and how confused it is for what it wants to do, you're pretty much guaranteed to never see anyone running this full set, with people generally only deciding to use the okay parts of it as placeholders until they get more desirable items. In terms of the global bonuses for wearing the full set, this set at least matches its level to an extent, but even then it's a bit anemic, basically looking like an even further underpowered cousin of the Disciple. With plus one all skills, 50% magic find, a pitch of attack rating, defense, mana, and life leech, which leans it into looking like a low level melee set, which would make it a little bit better, but you have to remember, this set uses up your weapon slot with a wand without any real special perks, so you are a bit limited. I mean, seriously, in terms of the melee, yes, the wand has enhanced damage by percent, which is nice, as well as an actually reasonable amount of cold damage, combined with the mana leech, and if this was on a different base, it would look like a reasonable low-level melee weapon. But instead, it's on a wand that, even if you upgraded it to elite, you'd only do about 8 to 54 damage, and that requires much higher levels to wield. So maybe we should look at it as a caster weapon. Even at that, it's lackluster, since while it does pack 20% faster cast and some flat mana, you can get better in mundane magical items of the same level. In a similar why is it that way kind of vibe, the hat is equally silly, with defense per level being okay, but just trickling in an underwhelming amount of reflect damage and a moderate amount of magic find. And as you may have noticed, no partial set bonuses to compensate for it. So at this point, you may be wondering, what parts of this set do people actually use, since the full set is obviously confused and bordering on useless? Well, that falls to the gloves and boots, with the gloves being basically competitors for other attack speed gloves, with 20% increased attack speed, but with a tiny amount of poison damage and an okay amount of flat life, at least for gloves. They can tide you over, but they are definitely at the low end of attack speed gloves, generally only being used because you have not found some okay rares or something like laying of hands or lava gout. Similarly, the boots are just competitors for other run-walk boots, though these at least have a bit more of an argument with them since they pack a few boosts to strength and dexterity, as well as a bonus to attack rating on top of their thankfully zippy 40% faster run-walk. Definitely a few notches below stuff like Immortal Kings or Alders, but nowhere near as bad or confused as the rest of the set. As far as to whether I'd bother upgrading the set, probably not. All you'd gain is a pinch of defense on the two worthwhile parts, and not enough to justify the rune cost. So overall, this is one of those sets that I give a hard pass to for now, but would love to see it being made into a set designed for a niche variant in future ladder seasons. All they would need to do is lean hard into the melee with the global bonuses, and you could see a potential drummer barb become viable with it. That said, it would definitely require tweaking, not the least of which being corrections for damage, attack speed, and crushing blow, since it eats up so many slots for these types of improvements. So do you think they should lean into caster or melee for Sanders, or should they just leave it alone as a lost cause? Mention it down below, and as always, a special thanks to all the viewers that threw a coin to their YouTuber. It helps out channels my size so much more than you think. Sazabi's Grand Tribute is the current hot topic for a lot of channels, being touted as an amazing new budget mercenary option with the changes to both the set, as well as the availability of an Act 5 Frenzy Barbarian. This is mostly due to one key change to the global bonuses of the set, though the budget nature of this can only really apply to
to online play due to the relative rarity of the sword itself, which in solo play will often take longer to find than the runes for something like grief or fortitude. The big full set bonus that was added in 2.4 was the inclusion of the 16% damage reduction, which does greatly improve your general durability against physical attacks at least. The other 2.4 mods that were a little less impressive with plus one all skills, which is nice to have in general, as well as a poison length reduction modifier. The rest of the mods as far as the stuff that's been around since day one, with the faster run walk, decent life leech, chunky percent boost to life, and resistances being standard fare on the set, are pretty good, and they have been around since day one, like I said. And they were one reason this set was kind of a decent sleeper even in past versions, since online you were able to get every part of it from free stuff games even, due to a lack of love for sets, especially any sets other than Tal's, Trang's, or Immortal King. Now, the easiest part of the set to find is the Mental Sheath, which I stumble across a lot even in solo cell found runs. It works as an okay competitor even to stuff like lore, since it comes in with decent defense, plus all skills, and variable resistances to fire and lightning that can go up to about 20%. And usually I'll throw a resistance rune into it just to round out those numbers a bit more depending on my needs and what I've found so far. The other two parts are elite items, so a bit less common, though I do tend to find a lot more of the armor due to the fact that I farm Act 4 in Hell a lot, and Diablo and Bale have fairly good drop rates for it. That said, its bonuses are a little less impressive with a bit of faster hit recovery, attack rating versus demons which is handy against bosses, and it has some flat defense as well as some extra life and strength. Though generally speaking, the Ghost Liberator will be your heaviest piece of gear at 165 strength, so plus 25 strength is only going to give you a little extra damage in melee. On the subject of melee, we have the last part of the set, and the item I find the least of out of the set, and for me has been weirdly less common than even low runes, and that is Sazabi's Cobalt Redeemer, an indestructible cryptic sword with a solid attack speed, boosted damage to demons, as well as some extra strength, dexterity, and a bit of cold damage. And while the damage output is enough to get you through hell difficulty, it won't be exceptionally quick at it, though it is good against bosses and I love pairing it with laying of hands when I do use it. And to throw a little bit of my personal bias in here, I've always felt, even since day one, that this should have been a naturally spawning ethereal, though I doubt we'll ever see that happen. As far as upgrades, the only part that can even be upgraded is the helmet, so I would not waste the runes on that. But overall, the set is, and actually has been, a reasonably good and easy to get set online since it was heavily underestimated, and pretty much was a great example of a budget set in that context. Though in single player, you'll be hard pressed to get all the parts together before you find the runes to make something better, so keep that in mind with all the fanfare that's been going on. So, do you think they should make ethereal sets, or do you think they should continue to follow the no ethereal set rule? Mention it down below, and as always, thanks for all the support from the channel members, patrons, and viewers like you. Talrosh's wrappings are by far some of the most popular, well-known, and sought-after set items in Diablo 2, generally being used for a variety of partial bonuses or as budget options for certain mercenaries, depending on the part. Often touted as the strongest set in the game, I personally would place it as a very close second in terms of absolute usefulness, even though it is far and away more popular due to being the sorceress set and fairly strong at that. As far as overall bonuses, it does fall in line with most of the other class-specific sets, packing plus skills, resist all, and the glowing aura we all expect, with its special mix of flavor added in. In this case, plus life, magic find, and hit recovery being the important modifiers, though the defensive perks and replenish life are not bad additions either. These bonuses, combined with the individual parts, can be useful for pretty much any sorceress build you can imagine, though in terms of partial set use, the fire sorceress generally has the most to gain from the perks we'll see floating about, since it can benefit the most from the least number of slots. The reason this is important is because while fine, some individual parts of the set can be a little suboptimal, with a prime example being Talrosh's Mask, an excellent budget mercenary helmet and also just a great budget melee character helmet in general. It packs dual leech plus life and mana and resist all, which are great mods, though in terms of what else the sorceress can use in this slot, generally it pales in comparison unless you're playing a melee variant of the class. Similarly good, but facing tough competition is the armor, the guardianship, though this at least fits a bit more in line with what you'd expect from a sorceress magic find setup, with some decent boost to resist, some flat defense, low strength requirements, and magic find, not to mention a stack of magic damage reduction, which can work reasonably well with a number of energy shield builds. This is further helped to fit in with the two-part bonus for the armor, providing a small bump to faster cast rate that can be used to free up other slots if you really wanted to. Moving down, 
down we have the belt which is a fairly common choice for three parting the set though it does sometimes compete with the armor in this function depending on what gear you have available at the time the belt again has reasonable stat requirements maximum belt slots as well as plus dexterity mana and even a bit of mana recovery in the form of damage to mana conversion this combined with a small bit of magic find can be fairly nice though it does only go up to 15 percent when paired with two parts of the set it grabs you a little defense and when combined with a third part we again see another 10 percent faster cast rate on to the amulet we have a fairly solid skill amulet for the sorceress and a pretty popular pick though it can be beaten out by a high-end caster amulet those are exceptionally rare to successfully craft and will take a lot of resources barring some amazing luck so an amulet that packs plus two all skills lightning resist flat mana and life and a four part set bonus of 10% faster cast is pretty welcome as far as the lightning damage on this it's mostly pointless unless you're playing a melee sorceress this is frequently combined with two to three other parts of the set for various builds to help cement okay cast speeds and magic find along with reasonable mods the last part of the set is the lidless eye not to be confused with the lidless wall this is a contentious piece for people due to the excessive love of oculus because well magic find orb but lidless eye is actually a lot bigger of a powerhouse than people often recognize since it combines flat life mana and energy along with faster cast rate and variable bonuses to each of the elements masteries up to two points for each where it starts to shine however is in the partial set bonuses with two parts granting plus skills three parts piercing enemy fire resist four parts piercing lightning resist and the full set boosting cold damage so it wouldn't be redundant with cold mastery the reason this is favored by fire sorceresses is due to that three part bonus since three parts won't mess with your casting breakpoints whereas four part bonus will result in you struggling to reach the lightning breakpoints due to lightning and chain lightning requiring significantly higher boosts to reach the same casting frames as far as upgrading the set, I generally would not bother. The defense boost won't be that significant to justify the rune cost. And as far as what goes into deciding the parts to use, it really depends on what other equipment you have available at the time, and of course, your build. I personally take the equipment gap approach, focusing on which parts will interfere with my core equipment the least, since as it stands, outside of certain fire sorceress builds, there will be a superior option using crafted items, rune words, and uniques, so this will fit as a powerful interlude rather than the main show for them and on fire sorceresses i will focus on getting three parts with the orb to get that extra bit of fire piercing with plus skills especially since it will save me from having to invest hard points in cold mastery to go dual elemental to deal with true immunes Overall, I like and use the set regularly as just an easy go-to option with zero thought that leaves key slots like the shield, gloves, and rings open, allowing a solid core build while still bringing value to the slots it uses. Though in the end, it does end up being outclassed by more focused options by the time you get to your truly final build for a sorceress. That said, we do have one more set to go, so do you have a favorite set in the game? If so, which one is it and why? Mention it down below and be sure to keep gaming, have fun, and peace out. This has been Alzra. Bye. Easily my favorite set, and in my opinion the best designed set of Diablo 2 is Trang Ul's Avatar, the Necromancer class specific set. The reason I feel this way about this set is because it does two things that no other set does. First is that it is one of only a handful of methods of enabling a mediocre build to become S tier, without relying on brute forcing with just plus skills or nonsense like that. And the second is because it is the only set that actively changes the user's mechanics in a unique and distinct manner by transforming the necromancer into a vampire. So before we jump into the actual set bonuses, we need to look at why this transformation is important. And this has to do with how it impacts the character's animations. In vampire form, what most people will notice is that the animations in general seem longer. And to an extent, this is true with slower attack speeds, longer total cast animations, and a shift to blocking using hit recovery rather than block speed. This form has a far more methodical feel to it at first glance. What most people don't recognize, though, are the positive changes this form brings. For example, the vampire form moves at the same speed whether running or walking, allowing you to preserve your block rate and defense while losing absolutely zero movement speed and never having to worry about stamina. And while we did mention that the total casting animations are longer, the vampire also has much faster casting action frames than the normal necromancer, meaning you are far less likely to have a spell interrupted since it casts so much earlier in the animation, and since most vampire builds use spells with casting delays, such as poison nova, summons, or even firewall, this extension to the cooldown is much less of an issue. 
Now you may have noticed I mentioned Fire Wall there, and this is because while the set itself follows the normal global modifiers of resist all and plus skills on class specific sets, the special flavor it adds is to adapt itself to the form you've taken. With the addition of Fireball, Firewall, Meteor, and even Fire Mastery, not to mention solid mana and regeneration bumps, and even some life leech to mirror the lifesteal of the normal vampires. So you may be wondering how this fulfills the other aspect of the set I mentioned earlier, since a dozen levels and a few fire skills is not an S tier build. Well, that comes down to the partial bonuses of the set, or more precisely, the shield, Trang Ul's wing. While most people recognize Death's Web as the main tool of the Poison Necromancer, this shield gives you easy access to very similar effects, with plus skills, plus strength and dexterity, as well as fire and poison resist naturally, but when you start pairing it with two other parts, usually the belt and gloves on most builds, you'll see a minus 25% enemy poison resist pop up, which takes you from barely tickling broken immunes to dealing decent damage to them, thanks to this applying after effects like lower resist. Admittedly, this effect obviously dwarfs the four-part bonus of Replenish Life, but it's still there as a nice minuscule cherry on top. Now, the other parts are no slouches either, with the belt offering solid flat life, mana, and a pinch of Replenish Life, but even more importantly, cannot be frozen, as well as the three-part bonus of a chunky cold resist. There's people who regularly use this just for that cannot be frozen when they don't want to risk shattering corpses with stuff like Ravenfrost. And if we move over to the gloves, we have one of my favorite caster gloves in the game, Trangul's Bracers, which obviously has plus curses for the Necromancer, but makes itself exceptionally useful for a number of builds thanks to the inclusion of 20% faster cast rate, chunky cold resist itself, and a pretty big bump to poison skill damage, which, while not as useful as the minus resist on the shield, does work great for alternate builds such as the poison Javazon, Venom Assassins, and even Rabies Druids. The less loved but still fairly decent pieces of equipment are first the helmet, Trangul's Guise, with its faster hit recovery, pretty big mana boost, and even a pinch of replenished life and retaliatory damage, which gains a bit more value when used with the full set due to how your blocking changes to being reliant on that faster hit recovery in vampire form. And second, we have Trangul's Scales, a normally heavy armor that covers up its shame by including faster run walk speed, as well as dropping its requirements significantly. This combined with some decent defense boosts and some summoning skills would make it about on par with most other class set armors, but its partial bonuses give it a nice big nudge up, thanks to 50% lightning resist at 3 items and a whopping 25% physical damage resistance whenever you complete the set, which helps a lot, especially if you combine it with the high walking speed and max block. While yes, sets like Talrasha's and Immortal King have more diverse uses and serve as smoothing tools for their class and are more desirable because of it, Trangs creates what essentially amounts to a new set of rules that fit the underlying class when used as a full set, and as a partial set turns a painfully mediocre build into a functionally S tier build by utilizing key mechanics. So do you agree with me about the importance of the Trangul set and how it should be used to define and direct the modification of unloved sets as well as the creation of new ones that define new playstyles, or do you prefer sets remaining far more mundane and just serving as direct boost to already existing playstyles? Mention it down below and as a special thanks to all those folks that clicked the channel membership or on the Patreon and made it possible to show off all of these sets and explain them in detail.